Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Amateur Hour Sports for tonight's Toronto Raptors matchup with the Brooklyn Nets. I'm back after a brief hiatus. Missed a Saturday game. Apologies for missing that one, but we're back at it as the Raptors are, uh, well, I don't know what they're looking for. Uh, they're just going to be playing your basketball game, and I guess they're just going to see what happens. Ultimately, I guess maybe losing would be okay, but hey, they're going to try and win, and then uh, I guess we'll see what happens along the way. Should be fun. Dennis Schroeder uh, in his return, uh, second return to the Toronto Raptors with this one. And the Brooklyn Nets, as bad as they are, as bad as the, as bad as the Brooklyn Nets are, uh, they're favored here by six and a half points. As bad as the Wizards were the other day, away at the Wizards, we were, they, they, the Wizards were five and a half point favorites. So the Raptors at home are six and a half point dogs to the Brooklyn Nets. That is the state of affairs for this current Toronto Raptors team, but we'll grind through nonetheless uh, on Saturday. Honestly, again, apologies for missing that one. Um, yeah, I guess I just didn't want to grind through that one. I was out already um, and then made some impulse on the spot plans. I was like, ah, I got stream, but I was like, ah, do I really want to rush home to watch the Raptors play the Washington Wizards? Not really, so I don't have a good excuse for missing the stream. I just, I'll just apologize to you guys. It is what it is. Um, didn't wasn't just decided to uh, just decided that I wasn't going to do that. Um, so uh, as for the rest of the season, eleven games remaining. I'm gonna be missing the Sunday stream this week for Easter Sunday. It's Easter holiday, family plans, and I will be missing the second last game of the season on April twelfth because. I have Jay's tickets. Other than that, I'll be streaming for Raptors games, so you'll have me here the rest of the season for 9 out of the 11 games. Nameless, I'm, I apologize for having to make you watch that Wizards game on your own. Hopefully, um, you don't mind. I'm missing two more for the rest of the, rest of the way, but um, plenty of content regardless for the rest of the season. Loads of content coming in the offseason. Offseason is where content, honestly, really picks up for the channel, so I'm excited to get into that stuff, and uh, honestly... I think we're all excited for this wretched season to end. I mean, if you if we could have the season end today, I think we'd be pretty happy about it. <laughs> Not have to watch this godforsaken basketball team lose any more games. And and you know what would be great about uh season ending today? The Raptors are currently behind the Memphis Grizzlies in the tank battle. Uh unbelievable turn of events here. Well, believable to me, unbelievable to some. The Raptors are lower by a full game to the Memphis Grizzlies two weeks ago. Many said, we're not bad enough to catch the Grizzlies. Well, we did it with <laughs> with 11. No, I think it was honestly 12 games to spare. I think we were lower than them before that Wizards game. Yeah, we were. With 12 games to spare, we got them. So here we are. Uh, regardless, thanks everybody for remembering me and uh, not, not bailing on me after uh, I missed out on the Saturday stream. Uh, from what I saw, don't really regret having missed that one, but... Uh, again, you know, I, I, I owe it to you guys. Say I stream every game. I owe it to you guys to be here, but just didn't happen for that one. So uh, hopefully you can forgive me. I'm uh, just to see if the Raptors starting five is out. It is not. The net starting five is out. But uh, one player I definitely was not going to see in the Toronto Raptors starting five is Jonte Porter. Jonte Porter is subject of an NBA investigation surrounding irregular prop betting wow John T. Porter after all the injuries after all the work that has been put in yeah what is this this is actually Wendy's account that's weird why is that oh because he tagged ESPN Windhorst which is okay um <laughs> sorry Jonte Porter out of the lineup and away from the team, apparently, as he's subject to an NBA investigation involving player prop betting. So after everything that he's been through from an injury perspective, after everything, he's all the work that he has put in to get himself a real shot in the NBA and then really seizing that opportunity, playing pretty well 
in that opportunity to play regularly in the NBA, maybe earning himself a contract for next season, there is a possibility that Jonte Porter is going to ruin it all with some prop betting irregularities. And the prop betting, uh, no matter what, would be bad for an NBA player to involve themselves in prop betting in any way whatsoever. Even worse, the prop betting in question involved unders. Unders in games that Jonte Porter was playing in, one of which was the January 26th game against the uh, LA Clippers. And after four minutes playing in that game, he left the injury due to a re-aggravation of an eye injury. So, strange. Uh, DraftKings reported that the largest betting, uh, the biggest money winner for betters on any NBA player prop that day was Jonte Porter, three-pointers. He did not attempt a three in those four minutes, although he did go under on all of his props in that game. Uh, on March 20th, against the Phoenix Suns, Jonte Porter played three minutes. This was earlier, the, uh, this was last week. Uh, early in the week, sorry, or last week. He played three minutes before leaving the game for what was reported as an illness. He did not return, did not score, attempted and missed one shot, had two rebounds, and he was under on all of his pray- player props. DraftKings reported that Porter's prop bets were the number one moneymaker from that night in the NBA. So, very strange for Jonte Porter to only play four minutes and three minutes and for him to be the biggest money winner on DraftKings Sportsbook that day. That is is something that I would absolutely positively classify as irregular. And Jonte Porter is looking like he's in trouble. Looking like he's in trouble. Um, You know, to go through everything that he's been through, to get himself an opportunity in the NBA... And to do that, possibly, I mean, I, I listen, allegedly do that. But if he did that after everything he's done to get involved with a team in the NBA, man, that's going out fucking sad, man. Can't feel bad for him. Can't feel bad for him. He's making, look, he was on a two-way deal. He's making 415 k this year. 415 k that's more than some people make in their entire life. He made that, he's making that this year. As much as he's a lower-tier NBA player, and that's a lower-tier contract, that's a lot of money. And that's a lot of money that he has potentially thrown away, completely thrown away for the future. Well, he's going to get that money, but future money. He, um, he sold so he could sell. Indeed, Jay Alexander. All for, you know, what? A player prop on Jonte Porter on DraftKings. Like, how much how much are they letting you bet on that? Probably, like, I'd be surprised if you even get into five figures betting that. Uh, like, unless they're getting parlayed together. But even still, like, how much are people winning on that? Like, DraftKings probably takes less than, like, cons- let's say conservative guess. DraftKings is letting you bet 10k on that. 10k to win like 9 9k. Let's do the let's do the exact math here. Just uh just just a prediction. I don't even think DraftKings is letting you bet 10,000 on a player prop like that, but let's say they did, you're winning 9 grand off a 10k bet. Yeah, is that better than your $415,000 salary? Look, maybe it sets up some friends with a bit of money, but Man, to even play in that stuff is uh, is horrible, absolutely horrible uh, from John T. Porter's perspective. Now, everyone is uh, mentioning in like the comments of this that well, like this is what you get for putting gambling ads everywhere. Like players know not to bet on themselves, <laughs> you know. Players know not to bet on the NBA, regardless of. Uh, the amount of gambling ads out there, like this is this has happened before in in all sports. 
there are cases like this even before the legalization and regulation of gambling uh, wi widely across North America. These sorts of things happened before. Players know not to do it, and I don't think... Look, I don't think getting rid of these... I, I, I don't believe that getting rid of these ads will... Uh, not decrease the amount of times this happens. But, yeah, it won't be to the same frequency. I, I agree. I'm not going to say that it won't be to the same frequency. But, like, listen, the player has got to not do it. <laughs> you know? Smoking weed. Yeah. It's out there. Every corner you look, there's a dispensary to buy weed. Well, NBA, I guess you can do it now, but. Well, can you? I don't know. Regardless, if you know it's in your profession that you cannot do that, don't fucking do it. You know? Like, I got no problem with it. Uh, you guys know me. I'm an, I'm an avid sports better. Uh, I have a sports book partner here at Bet99. I always mention, you know, if you're betting on sports or if you're looking for uh, a sports book to get yourself started, Bet99 is a good place to get started. But. I always preach responsible gaming habits. When people give me bets, I, I, will, I never just blindly say, yeah, good bet, bet that, whatever. You know, I'm, a, I'm an avid sports better, but responsible gaming is very important to me. This is very irresponsible gaming on Jonte Porter's part. So, yeah, it would decrease the frequency, but look, it's, um, it's a money-making endeavor 100%. And Jonte Porter's got to take responsibility. That's it, you know? Our, our sports betting ads, you know, are they, do you see too many of them? You know, maybe. Maybe they can get a little bit annoying. But, hey, you, um, you are responsible for your own actions. You're making a qu uh, uh, half a million dollars a year to play basketball. You got to own up to yourself and be responsible for that. This isn't even quite a Pete Rose situation. Uh, the Pete Rose situation, Pete Rose was betting on his team to win. Um, so I was betting on that, that I always have more, like, it's obviously very wrong to do that. Um, that's always, a. Uh, it's very wrong regardless. I'm trying to adjust my camera a bit. I accidentally knocked it today. Um, however, uh, as much as both are bad, at least Pete Rose was betting on his team's success. Jonte Porter was betting, uh, was betting on his unders in games. That is called throw in the game. And look, he checked out after three minutes and four minutes. So it wasn't like he was throwing the game or anything like that. But, man, betting on an under, that's worse. Both are bad. It's a little bit worse to bet on your unders rather than your overs. You know what I mean? Whew. I, um... I, I just think uh, it, you know there are certain there are certain professions in which you should not be betting on sports. Being a professional athlete is one of them where you should not be betting on your own sport, even if it is to win. Um, I, I just think it, it it just alters alters the product with the betting involved. You know, even if it's you know betting on your team to win, whatever whatever it may be. Absolutely, positively, no excuse for betting on it under on yourself. That is crazy. Uh, I was just mentioning, Phoenix asked a good question. How do you think somebody made up that John DePorter player prop? Um, having experience with these sports books, I would be shocked beyond belief if somebody was able to make more than $9,000 on one of John DePorter's player props. Shocked to my core if DraftKings let somebody bet more than 10 k on a Jonte Porter player prop. Um, if there's like a parlay on a bunch of different things, sure. But DraftKings said that they, the the biggest winner of the day was Jonte Porter under threes in that game against the Los Angeles Clippers. Look, if they're parlaying like under points, under rebounds, under assists, under under everything, if they're doing all that, then uh, then yeah, you could probably get to a certain. Like, like, let's let's try to just guesstimate here. Like if we're parlaying four things, let's say minus 110 on all of them, just standard odds for like a player prop. We're parlaying all this together. Somebody gets like 5K down. Oh, yeah. If you can get, if you're parlaying all of them together, yeah, you, you can get into like 50K, 100K range. 
if you're betting on just like the player props, like on their own, like you're not touching 100 K on that. I, I just really don't think DraftKings are taking that, that sort of limit on a bet like that. Um, unless, you know, this was a very calculated maneuver with a lot of betting groups involved. Don't think that would be a smart way to go about it. You're more likely to draw even more attention to yourself. But hey, if there was like betting groups, pro betting groups involved, people who know how to get down large quantities of money in different places, then, you know, I yeah, I could actually absolutely see this going into six figures or higher. Uh, but if it's just being reported at DraftKings, like DraftKings, there's no way DraftKings is giving you uh, like massive limits on, on bets like that. So uh, I don't know. I Listen, it, it's nowhere near enough to justify for a player making half a million dollars this year. For, for less, 40%. For, for, uh, it was like $415,000 his salary. There, There's no way it's anywhere near the amount to justify uh, giving up on what could maybe be future NBA contracts. It's crazy. Um, yeah, checking out for an illness, which I happened. Yeah, I remember watching the game, and I, I forgot about the I one, but it does ring a bell now. It is pretty insane for that to happen. Uh, yeah, you could definitely earn way more just continuing to play in the NBA. Absolutely. That's uh, that's what's created this situation. I think this would make a great video topic for tomorrow. I'm uh, excited to cover that. Uh Anyways, let's say what's up to the people in the chat. Yeah, on a long-winded sort of conversation there, but let's say what's up, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, we got Nathan McLeod joining, Nameless, one of my members, Sumaya, another one of my members, Nick Killer, Reggie Miller, a.k.a. Thomas Perry. Uh, Al Alamder is joining as well. It would be wild if it was true. We don't know if it was true, but if it was, man. King Hasi joining us, a Donde Mobile Gamer in here as well. Very much a Shohei Otani moment. Richard Pilsky joining. Uh, I like the under on Porter 3 tonight. Well, I do too because bro ain't playing today. <laughs> Jay Alexander joining. Francois V as well. Uh, Saint Mikhail Bridges' cousin told me to bet Raptors plus six and a half. <laughs> Let's go. Um, maybe it's the other way. Point. Yeah, bet that in point shaving. Maybe Mikhail Bridges can do some point shaving today. Uh, anybody doesn't know what point shaving is, by the way. Uh, let's say the Brooklyn Nets are favored by six and a half. Uh, Mikhail Bridges could work to have the Brooklyn Nets win the game, but not lose, sorry, to, to win the game, but but not cover the spread. That will be point shaving. So you're still winning the game, but you are making your team worse on purpose. That was a huge scandal in the 90s, I believe, uh, in college basketball, maybe early 2000s as well. Um, Phoenix joining as well. We already mentioned some of his comments, but what's going on to Phoenix? A stream OG as well. Uh, thank you, everybody, for hanging out tonight. Uh, yeah, the Otani situation came up as well. Uh, listen, um, not going to deny that these these sorts of scandals are coming more to the forefront with the legalization, regulation of sports betting widely across North America. Uh, absolutely, that has um, an effect on the amount of times something like this is going to arise. However, the player is completely responsible for it. It is what it is. Sports betting makes the league a lot of money. Sports betting mates, if you're regula if it's regulated, which it should be everywhere, makes the government money. Uh, it, it's a huge money-making endeavor. It is what it is. Um, a lot of it's scummy tactics. I believe sports these, uh, these sports books can make a ton of money uh, in preaching consistently, responsible gaming, not using... Um, what's the right word? Not using immoral tactics in order to make it happen but people want to bet on sports people do bet on sports there's a right way and wrong way to go about doing it i like to preach the right way of doing it i've done very well for myself in the regulated gambling space i've made uh, a good amount of money as uh, a, a almost a third income so to speak with sports betting so um you know me i'm uh, i'm very comfortable with with the idea of sports betting being at the forefront in in these sorts of broadcasts it is what it is there's a lot of companies fighting in the exact same space for people's uh, consumers' business. Um, it's a very competitive space, so they got to be aggressive with their gambling. But again, there's a right way, there's a wrong way to go about promoting stuff. Uh, I think some companies take things too far. That being said, no matter what, it is on the player to be smart not to bet against themselves and, or uh, not advise others to bet against that player as well. Uh College ball was great over the weekend. No men's say, but there is women's college ball. If you're interested, Thomas Perry 
watching on that. I won't be following, uh, uh, like I won't be watching while the stream. I do follow, but I won't be watching during the stream as it was uh, during uh, the men's tournament. I, I don't know. It's not I don't want to, it to be a, a sexist sort of thing, but I just don't follow it as closely as, as, as the men's tournament. It is what it is. Um, let me chat tonight. Have a great stream. Well, thank you so much, Nana Faviata. Thank you for joining. Hope you are, uh, hope you're doing well. And hope you, well, I don't know if you're going to watch, but if you are, hope you enjoy the game. If you're not, you'll probably enjoy whatever you're doing more than watching the game. <laughs> uh, can't wait to watch Garrett Temple as well tonight. He was, I heard he was playing as like a, a small ball five the other day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Garrett Temple made the thumbnail today. He's actually in my thumbnail for the Wizards game. It was funny because he actually did get meaningful minutes and I wasn't expecting that, but I uh, left him as a thumbnail for this one. That just goes to show you the, the current state of this Toronto Raptors team. That's what it is. What would your ROI have to be to even consider what Jonte did if you were in a position? Well, ROI is just, our ROI is a bit different because that's just a percentage on your investment, of course. Um, if I'm in Jonte Porter's position, like, I don't know, like 500 grand is a lot of money, but you have to feel like you're going to... Unless he's concerned about like earning that down the line in the NBA, which I don't think he should be, given his current position, like we gotta be talking seven figures for me to even consider deploying a scheme like that. And I just do I I cannot envision Jonte Porter formulating a strategy to make that sort of cash on something like this. Like I just cannot see that happening. With the limits involved especially betting in the regulated space on DraftKings. Like, I, I, I just cannot see that happening. Crazy stuff from Jonte. Oh, and I have Yada with the, uh, the Grady Dick and Anthony Black jersey swap as a profile photo. I like that. That's a, that's a, that's a, good, that's a good profile pick. <laughs> uh, it's likely we hold the sixth seed. If I'm correct, we have a 45% chance of keeping your pick. That is correct. It would be a 45% chance of retaining the selection. Um, if the allegations are true, do sports books, uh, do sports books issue a refund for people who bet the overs? Uh, no, um, nothing they can really do about it. It's just, you know, it was, it happened in the game. If a player purposely goes under his player prop, you know, they put the line to the odds they thought reflected that. And it is what it is. Um, there's not really anything they can do about refunding that. You know, injuries happen all the time. Yeah, not really something you can you can refund at all. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's tough to say if it's likely or not he'd get suspended. Uh, just from the very preliminary thing we have from Woj, it doesn't look very good. It, it doesn't it doesn't look very good. You know, it's funny if Jonte stays in the league for four years, making five hundred k, or even he could uh, re retire relatively easily if he threw that money into a SP five hundred ETF, ten percent. What? Uh, Whatever that is. Um, yeah, I got to learn more about savings account and such, but and investments. But I think with the performances this season, he had an opportunity to earn a standard NBA contract for next season where he'd be making like a million dollars. So it's it's absolutely crazy. Um, some athlete got caught cheering. Um, Mr. Bro joining late. Jonte Porter is under investigation for irregularities in player prop markets on his unders does not look good Jonte watched one too many <laughs> amateur sports you had to take part of bet nine sports listen no it was DraftKings. it wasn't it wasn't our sportsbook partner bet nine nine but listen Jonte could have bet on some uh some ncaa he could have bet on some nfl didn't have to be betting on himself going under or any other nba game for that matter let's not throw, let's not throw our partner under the bus here <laughs> Game has not started yet. The game is, is going to be happening in Toronto tonight. Raptors at home to the Brooklyn Nets who've lost six in a row. Raptors at home are six and a half point dogs. Man, this might be tough. Yeah, what is Jonte doing right now? What does he do? Like, what do people do under under? Do they just, you, you just live your life? Like, I don't know. I guess you got to just do something. What do you do? Jeez, 
Uh, starting five for the Raptors tonight. Javon Freeman, Liberty. Oh, my goodness. Trent, Gary Trent. Grady Dick, Oche Abaji, and Kelly Olenek. Bruce Brown, once again, will be coming off the bench in this one, uh, which is interesting. Uh, what is also interesting is Jemias Ramsey started on a Saturday against the Washington Wizards, and Jemias Ramsey is no longer under contract with the Raptors. Um, yeah, they let the second 10-day contract expire, uh, letting him go back to the G League. And yeah, uh, for a player they were using a lot, who they even had enough confidence to start in a recent game, a little bit strange for them just to say, um, nah. But, you know, I, I guess they've had their look. Uh, they have signed another player on a 10-day contract. It was somebody off the Raptors 905. I forget his name, uh, which is a bit disrespectful, but my apologies. Sorry, I'm trying to get the camera at the right height. Um, but yeah, uh, Jemias Ramsey no longer with the team. They had their look. They can try and do something in the summer or even before the end of the season if they want, but they want to get a look at somebody coming out of the 905 here and see what happens there. Uh, but it, you know, Jemias Ramsey, for a guy who shot the ball so well in G League, I was a bit upset with his overall shooting metrics, uh, shooting numbers for the Raptors, but his defense was good. Um, good effort player. I, I I would like to see more in uh, in preseason slash you know hopefully the Raptors get to see in training camp. I'd be interested to see what goes down there. Uh, yeah, nothing special, but a player I I'd be willing to if I'm the Raptors I'd be willing to see in the summer. But not sure that's going to go down at this point. Who knows? Who knows what will go down? But I, I it's curious that he starts the day before the Raptors say now nah, we're good. <laughs> You're. Uh, Go back to the Oklahoma City blue, buddy. But, yeah, not, nothing special by, by any means whatsoever. Um, yeah. We'll see if they bring him back for training camp. Uh, do I know Steven Smith? Stop, NBA guy. Got caught cheating on Vegas. Got three. I did not see that. Wow. Again, like, the allure of money is there, but, you know, these, these, these guys are professional athletes. They have to take on, um, well, I guess you're not a professional athlete. You're an NCAA, you're an amateur, but um, you, you know what you sign up for. It's your responsibility as the athlete, right? Um, you know, sports betting's out there. Uh, and, and it's, it's a horrible vice for some people, but it's your responsibility as, as the athlete, man. Have we had over 100 players in uniform this year? It feels like a football roster. I'm actually not quite sure what how many players it's been now, but I imagine, I think they've already set the record for, in franchise history for players used, uh, especially with all the trades that have gone down. But, I mean, yeah, like, think about like the opening day roster. Jesus Christ, man. A lot of overhaul, a lot of change going on. <laughs> how McDoordash has avoided that revolving door. Astounds me. Well, the thing is, he's on a two-year contract. He's got another year in his contract. People don't want to take on some um, guaranteed money for next season for Jalen McDaniels, right? And uh, it's not like it's crippling money either. It's four and a half million dollars. But yeah, it does suck that he's getting paid that much. Um, yeah, the team team stinks right now. Uh, hopefully, brighter pastures on the horizon. Um, but hey, Jante's making it real easy to to say, uh, we probably need to get a different center, but Jante's okay. Making it real easy to say, you know what, we did need that other center anyways. A, a rim protecting center. But hey, if the Raptors' goal was to tank, they've done a phenomenal job at it. Ten losses in a row. They've lost every game since it seems as though they really did commit to a tank. So uh, everything is going uh, to plan and going splendidly. It's it's really easy when you sucked even before. When you're trying to win, you you very rarely did. So it's it was, it's very easy for us to try to lose. Dennis Schroeder's point player player prop uh, number um, is sixteen and a half, which is ooh, a touch high I think for Schroeder. I don't know enough about them. Uh, one player prop I do like. 
is Gary Chen Jr. over on 20 and a half points today. I uh, am, am I myself have bet Gary Trent Jr. over on points today. Um, 20 and a half for somebody who's probably going to take 20 shots. Yeah, I, I thought that was a pretty good line today. It was uh, brought up to me on the morning show that I do for NBA betting every weekday morning on the board YouTube channel at the board HQ. Uh, my co-host Pips. Brought up uh, Gary Trent points over it. And he was like, yeah, that's a good number for Gary Trent. He's going to be taking a ton of shots today. Gary Trent Jr. over 20 and a half points is a bet that I have uh, going for this game. So hopefully uh, a big night from Gary. Had 26 shots on Saturday against the Wizards. Went 1 of 7 from 3. Also had 10 free throws. Went 10 of 10 from the line. Very interesting. So hopefully big night from Gary. Get a bit of a, get a, get a, bit of a winner there, you know? Captain Darko Tank Commander, man. If he's, one, if he's doing, look, he's doing this well. Um, he's doing that well. <laughs> Why can't Gary play like he did when he first came here? I remember having many thirty-point games. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, but I spoke about it in a recent video. Thinking back to Gary Trent when he first joined the Raptors. And, you know, he's like 22 years old, all the potential of Gary Trent moving forward. And yeah, you look at Gary Trent now, current Gary Trent, three years later. What is does Gary Trent do better now than he did when he first came to the Raptors? He, okay, he's a better defender, which isn't saying much, but he's better on defense. He was already a good shooter. Maybe he's fine-tuned that a little bit, but he still can't finish at the rim. He's still not a good distributor. Um, he still can't uh, score in transition. Unless it's a three. Still can't ISO. Like, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Insane, like, genuine question. What has he improved on since joining the Raptors. Look, the when he joined the Raptors, he was a good player, and he still is, but there were certainly higher hopes for his abilities moving forward. Because he, he had some great numbers in, in the, the year that followed as well, but it, it doesn't seem like any skill has been significantly improved upon. You know, I, I I guess to get better overall sometimes means less scoring, and 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 I've, and I've mentioned that um, maybe a more fine-tuned role is is better for him because he's focusing on the things that make him uh, a really good player. But certainly, there were higher hopes for what he could become when he first joined the team, and the fact that we have to subdue the rule a little bit shows that maybe the success, um, the Im improvements overall, just didn't really happen the way we were expecting. It. I, it's just. Just strange. He's best suited to being a six man, but he hates coming off the bench, and he's very poor when he comes off the bench. It's 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 a baffling player, for sure. I don't know, man. Needs to find his role. Like, yeah, I I can I I kind of agree with that. And he's more more or less find, found it a lot this season. His shooting scoring has dropped from like seventeen a game to to twelve a game. The only reason that's going up is because near the end of the season, he just he took twenty six shots the other day, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 not the development arc nowhere near that we were expecting when we uh, when we saw how good he was when he first arrived to the team. That that's what's overall disappointing. What player do you wish had Gary Trent Jr.'s mentality? Like shoot or shoot? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know. Do I want that passed on? I don't think he takes a lot of bad shots. Like, when I watch Gary Trent, I don't think the, the decision-making is is off. So the execution at times is just not that good. Like, he just he can't put pressure on the rim, and, and that's just a fundamental skill he needed to keep on improving. He never got. And, and Grady Dick, I, I said that, I said earlier this season Grady Dick should be starting over Trent. Like, what does Trent do better than Grady Dick? 
Serious question. Like Trent's a bit of a better defender. I'll give you that. But again, that's not saying much. What is Gary Trent doing that Grady Dick couldn't do? Gary Trent may be slightly better at shooting, but give Grady Dick more opportunities, and I think he'll become better. Grady Dick, the better passer. Grady Dick, the better rebounder. Grady Dick, way better on the inside. Way better at cutting to the rim. Way better at finishing at the rim. I, I don't know, man. I, uh, I I definitely want to see Grady Dick starting there next season, whether or not Gary Trent's here. And look, Gary Trent's a fine player, and there's a ton of NBA teams that would like to have Gary Trent. And honestly, the Raptors would like to have Gary Trent for next season. It, it, it's just it's just a touch disappointing that he hasn't improved on the initial success since he joined the Raptors. I uh, Yeah, I definitely think Gary, Gary, Grady Dick's the more complimentary player to the core moving forward. So, yeah, it's strange. But we'll see what happens in the offseason. We'll see if he does remain a Raptor because he is a free agent. He has the opportunity to go where he pleases. Whew. This is going to be a tough game, guys. Brace yourselves. <laughs> 11 games left. We're, uh, we're getting there. And, hey, Desmond Bain's going to be playing tonight. So, Opportunity knocks. Uh, who the, uh, the Grizzlies have a tough matchup, don't they? Grizzlies are playing the Denver Nuggets. So, yeah. Okay, they won't win anyways. But I think the Grizzlies win more, win more than the Raptors on the way home. Taylor Jenkins is just manufacturing wins here and there at Toronto or not. Uh, I don't know what, to, as long as they just, there's something to, to look at and say, all right, they did this well, let's build on that. As long as they have something like that, I'll be, I'll be happy with the game. Um, and, and honestly, I, there have been very few games, I'd say, even amidst a tank, where I leave the game completely just in agony of what I just watched, you know? You've blown some leads, but hey, you, you got those leads with this team, that's, that's still cool. You played as best as you could, but talent limited you. That's cool, but I haven't been that many just outright horrific games. Starting fives here uh, for the Nets. Dennis Schroeder, Mikhail Bridges, Jalen Wilson. Who's Jalen Wilson? Dorian Finney-Smith and Nick Claxton. On the Raptors side of things, it's Javon Freeman-Liberty, Gary Trent Jr., Grady Dick, Oche Abaji, Kelly Olenek, and uh, Bruce Brown on the bench once again for this one. Interesting. Oh, we've been all through the Jonte Porta dilemma, one hundred percent. Do you think that that w- do you think with Darko, it's just simply NBA is too high a tier for overseas coaching? No. Um, no. <laughs> uh, I, I I do not believe you know your location and upbringing dictates your ability to be successful in the NBA. Um, no, and, and I'm absolutely not going to paint that sort of picture or um what's the term what's like i don't know there's some sort of saying i'm missing not gonna put uh i I don't know not gonna lump all those all every overseas coach into just like one example that maybe isn't going very well here uh anyways game has begun raptors at home against the Brooklyn Nets. Let's see where this one goes. Raptors with the first possession on offense here. Olenek out to Freeman Liberty. Gonna hit, did a pull up for three. No good. Olenek on the rebound. Deflected off the backboard and Nets have the ball. No RJ still. No Emmanuel quickly still. No Barnes still. No Pirtle still. This team is, uh, this team is struggling. But let's see where they go in, in this one tonight. Kids born in January have a much higher percentage chance of playing hockey freshly. Uh, as do kids a little bit less in February and a little bit less as well in March as the Rockets start the game. Is that Dorian Finney-Smith? First basket. Gary Trent for three, no good. Uh, kids born in January have the high percentage chance of playing hockey professionally. You want to know why? Because when they're younger... 
they're bigger than everybody because they're older. So when they're playing hockey when they're really young, they're the biggest kids on the team. So they get the highest amount of development early. Then a little bit less in February because they're also older, and then same with March. By the time things balance out, they've had the highest uh, amount of development time. Interesting phenomenon in hockey, isn't it? Ooh, Gary Trent, it would have been nice to start off with a three there. We don't have a, a bet 99 banger, but I did bet bet uh, I did bet Gary Trent over 20 and a half points today. I may have had a free bet on Dorian Finney-Smith first basket. Not a lot of money on it, though. Small free bet. But maybe. Finney-Smith trying to get the second bucket as well. Doesn't. And here come the Raptors looking to respond. Get their first basket of the night. Grady Dick to Javon Freeman-Liberty. Now Kelly Olynyk to Abaji at the rim. Lays it in. All right, nice dime by Kelly Olenek. He's been play, he's been doing well with the playmaking. And uh, nice finish there by Oche Baji. In the corner, Finney Smith gets the three ball to go. And the first five points for the Brooklyn Nets come through. Dorian Finney Smith. Yeah, I didn't make much on that Dorian Finney Smith bet. But hey, win's a win. <laughs> Oche Abaji in the corner. Grady Dick open for three. Oh, he missed. Gets Abaji gets the rebound, hits Grady Dick, cutting to the rim, and there you go. Grady Dick through contact at the rim, gets the finish. Lovely stuff there from Grady. Nice job by Abaji to feed him there. Yeah, Abaji does a lot of good things well. It's just the shooting, man. Uh, he hasn't been a super consistent shooter in his entire NBA career, so it's not like he's just not hitting them for the Raptors. Uh, I'd say it's been worse for the Raptors, but um, yeah, the, getting that sort of consistent three-point shot would make Abaji a very good player. So if he can figure out his shot, we'll see if he can. But if he can, he'll be he'll be a very good player to have on your team. Seven four here, timeout called. Uh, all right. Early timeout here, 7-4 Brooklyn Nets heading to commercial. Oh, they're challenging this nice and early. Well, just get it out of the way, I guess. Um, Johnny's so funny to me. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's not, it's sad that a player would do that to themselves. If, if he did, it's sad a guy would do that to himself. I have, like, no sympathy at all. He makes plenty of money. Like, even, like, if it's, you know, family-related, his brother makes, what, is, what does Michael Porter make? Like, $30 million a year? No excuse. Challenging something in the first is wild. Challenging something in the first three minutes is even more wild. I wonder what the, well, I wonder what the earliest challenge is in NBA history. Can I make sure I looked it up? Earliest coaches challenge in NBA history uh <laughs> oh Nick gonna be the first coaching challenge in NBA history but um what is the earliest <clears throat> let's do quickest earliest is giving me like the the first guy which is Nick Nurse quickest coaches challenge in NBA history Let's see if I can get that with Google. Um, no, nothing. But, um, all right, well, if you feel like you're going to win, if you guarantee you're going to win that coach's challenge, then I guess, you know, you get value out of just being right when later in the game you could use it and not be right. But, yeah, I would certainly save it for uh, a more important role later on. MPJ's on five-year, $180 million. So $36 million a year. Yeah. Uh, family is taken care of. Jante don't need. Yeah. Who is. Yeah. Family taking care. Who is Jante even helping by selling his own props? You know? Like. 
Like, I was thinking, like, oh, maybe some friends and families making them, like, you know, 10 to 50K. And, hey, yeah, that's a lot of money for them. But, damn, just ask, you know, ask Michael Porter Jr. for whatever's in his pocket. It's probably more than what they made on those bets. What the fuck? Looks like Brooklyn will win this challenge. Hey, you better win that challenge if you're challenging that early. When I go to fans post trade proposals, section, my brain gets right. Listen, in the, in the summer... I mean it's respectfully to you guys, but some of the fucking mock trades I get sent, like it looks like I, I it looks like I've opened up a random page of the dictionary. Like there's just so many fucking players. Like somebody would send me a like a 25 player four team trade, be like thoughts. I'm not fucking reading that. I'm not going through that whole trade. Like, what do you think this is? Who's making trades like this? We're not swapping our entire roster with another team's. It's not, how, it's not how NBA typically does things, you know? You know, send me your mock trades. I like looking at them. It, you know, gives me some interesting thoughts for potential, you know, content and videos. And I just like engaging in NBA dialogue. But, bro, like, make it a, a trade that has some opportunity or semblance of actually going down. Just throwing whoever in a trade, I like. I I just be like, that's it's probably too complicated to ever happen. And, and sure, there's been complicated trades before, but man, like, how am I supposed to properly evaluate it? Very itchy right now. Sorry. But it was a challenge. Fifteen seconds into a game, once what game was that? And why? <laughs> Uh, maybe if it's like first 15 seconds, it's like your best player and you're like, nah, we're not like, we're not even chancing him getting in foul trouble, I I guess. But even still, that's weird. No, it wasn't actually two teams, sw two whole rosters swapping, but it was like, it's a, a hyper hyperbolic. I'm saying what I'm saying is I'm not reading all that. No, people send me like mock trades and like, oh, what do you think of something like this? I'd be like, I, I think nothing because it's too complicated for me. Send me your mock trades, but send, send me a mock trade that is a chance. Like this isn't your fantasy league, you and your friend just making a trade for the sake of it. This is this is real life. All right, 11-8 here. I've just not been rambling here. Raptors down by three. Gary Trent. To Olinick. Nice feed to Freeman Liberty. Man, Kelly Olinick, a nice player to have. Such a good passer out of those high post areas. I'm excited to see him and Pirtle. Well, we'll see if it's Pirtle or another rim protecting big starting for an entire season. Kelly Olinick in the true backup role. Raptors get a steal here. Chance to take the lead with Grady Dick. Grady Dick for three. No good. Three ball there for Brooklyn is good. Gary Trent to the rim. Sorry, I had to check something there. Gary Trent to the rim gets the finish. Claxton, down low, loses handle, out of bounds. Raptors down 14-12. Everyone wants Nick Claxton. I, I just don't really see it happening. If we're getting a guy like Claxton, you got to find a way to trade Pirtle. I think that'd be a little bit difficult to do. I think a bit of too many moving pieces. I, I, I can't see us making a big splash in the offseason for a center. Not saying it won't happen, but I, I'm saying I don't think it will. I, um, I, you know... With Darko, I... I <laughs> Personally, I, I just, I, I'm okay with the idea that, it, yeah, I, I know absolutely Darko's getting another season. I'm not going to dispute that. Um, I wouldn't say I don't mind it. You know, I, I, I guess I don't mind it, but I would probably prefer, like, hey, Jordy Fernandez is still not a head coach and we could make him that. But, yeah, I'm willing to, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to... You know, reluctantly say, okay, let's see what a second season does. As Olinick for three doesn't go. Nice rebound by Abaji, but doesn't finish right at the rim. 
Have you seen March Madness? My favorite movie, bro. I liked March Madness one so much. I saw I saw the second one. The second one's even better. <laughs> Corner three up for Bridges. Weird form there. It just looked, that just looked weird. Doesn't go. Jackson is ideal next to Scott. He's absolutely not. Like, nice three ball there by Trent. Claxton spaces the floor even less than Pirtle does. I, I don't know why, with all due respect. What, what, what do we see in Claxton that everyone is, is, in, is in love with? Because, like, Pirtle's a, a, a decent fit. I, I, I think Claxton's a worse fit. Offensively. Like, defensively, like, yeah, Claxton might be the better defender. But, yeah, offensively. Okay, rim protecting wise, yeah, I, Pirtle's also very good at that. Um, to be honest, like I, is he's the better defender, but like is Pirtle not the better fit? Scotty Barnes is a lot more of the help defender. That's what Scotty is very good at being a help defender down low on defense. So is Claxton. Now Pirtle takes, like, when Pirtle takes on the primary responsibilities and then Barnes can be the help defender, I think that's ideal, whereas Claxton is m less inclined to being that sort of primary player there defensively. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I personally don't really see what Claxton is doing that's making people so in love with him for the Raptors as Abaji misses another layup. Yeah, the age stuff is definitely, like, a reason to want to go from ahead of Pirtle, like, yeah, you, you convinced me to make a swap if you could. Like, you convinced me to make a swap just by the age factor. 100%. But I'm saying, like, fit-wise, Claxton is not the better fit for this team. Nor is he a very good one. It's just, he's a very good, pretty young player that the Raptors want to see on their team, you'd, you'd want to see develop with the Raptors going forward. Fit-wise, is it perfect? Not really close to it, in fact. That, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, Pirtle doesn't shoot, but he's a very good passer, playmaker out of the high post. Claxton cannot shoot. He's not a good passer to the high post either. I'm wrong. All right. <laughs> Say no more. I this, like, yeah, I told you my side. I can't you say I'm wrong. It is what it is. We disagree. <laughs> Nothing you can do there. JV. I don't miss JV. JV could not play defense. Like, I, I'm a big fan of Nick Claxton. I, I'd want him on the Raptors, but I'm saying, like, just because I want Claxton, I'm not going to make up reasons for him being a good fit. I just don't think he would be. Again, I'd take him on the Raptors easily. <laughs> I'm not, not disputing that. I, I'm not absolutely not disputing that. Make a jaunty interpreter. I'll, I'll be his interpreter. I'll say, get your fucking money up in the NBA next season, not on DraftKings. My thoughts on the Porter news. <sighs> it's a shame that um, he's possibly throwing a career he's worked very hard to manufacture away with something like this that probably didn't even make him that much money. If it is, if it is true. Very sad. But it's, uh, it's respon the player's responsibility to not get involved with that sort of thing. I know it's out there and it's, it's teasing, but you got to be responsible if you're an athlete, man. Uh, we got a, a uh, new subscriber coming in the chat here. Jacob's Too Sexy has subscribed. Me? Welcome to the Amateur Hour Army. Uh, you know why I've been on my phone? It's because I was making an alt account. So, it looks like I got fans out there. <laughs> what was that about Porter? Jonte Porter is potentially involved with some uh, NBA player prop betting unders on himself. There you go. Stupidest case of self-sabotage I've seen in a while. It's the stupidest case of self-sabotage I've seen in about a week since the Otani news came out. <laughs> but at least Otani's got his money up already, where Porter has, has not. 
Give me Bull Bull. I'll pass. The idea of Bull Bull is greater than the actual Bull Bull. All right, back from commercial. Abaji in corner three. Nice, nice little play design out of the out of the inbound there. Um, I don't know. I feel like it'd be somewhat easy to uncover some illegal sports betting with from players within the league. If it's a scheme like that, that's trying to that's a huge money making scheme. Like if a guy's just betting here or there, that'll be really tough to uncover. If you are making like an actual plan to help people around you make a ton of money, that's relatively easy to uncover. Gambling sites have so so much data available for these sorts of things. And new, newly signed on a 10-day contract as uh, Kobe Simmons in the game for the Raptors. He's been with the Raptors 9 of 5 this season, as has Muhammadu Gay, who has checked in for the Raptors as well. Tough, tough lineup out here right now as Gary Trent airballs in mid-range. It's, it's Simmons. It's Muhammadu Gay. It's Gary Trent Jr., Oche Abaji, and Jordan Nawara. That is the five on the floor for the Raptors right now. In the least disrespectful way possible, only stating it as a fact, this is probably the worst five-man unit that has been on the floor for the Raptors this season. And, and look, these guys are fighting for roster spots. Look, we're giving them basically a tryout here, an opportunity to prove themselves. I understand. Factually speaking, maybe I don't even need to, maybe I didn't have to say it. Factually speaking, this is probably the worst crop of talent we've had on the floor at the same time this season. Let's see how they do here. I believe Jonte Porter's contract is up. So if he's he's guilty of this, then yeah, he ain't he ain't coming back in the league. ED projected top 14. I've seen him projected top 14. I've seen him projected in the second round as well. It's a wide range of outcomes here. Although uh, he has torn up the first two games in the tournament thus far. Noir attacking the rim, fouled. Gotta say, Jordan Noir, I didn't expect this guy to be as much of a I'm fucking shooting the ball. <laughs> I didn't expect him to be as much of that as uh, as he is. This guy takes every shot. Well, Jalen Harris was uh it was drugs. It wasn't sports betting, but yeah. Not not to say that Jalen Harris likely had a large future in the NBA regardless, but it's upsetting that we never got to see more. So Kobe Simmons is 26 years old. Opportunity here on a 10-day contract. So it's, um. by the way, guys, G League players make peanuts compared to NBA players. G League players, average, on average, barely make a, a minimum, um, barely make a livable wage. So... Players who sign on a 10-day contract, they're likely going to make more in that 10-day span than they would in the entire season playing in the G League. So these sorts of opportunities are massive, massive, massive for these guys, especially if they can earn a second 10-day contract. So this is a huge moment for, for Simmons. I know he's played in the NBA before, but like just opportunities like this are humongous for these guys. Jerry Trent is five. Oh, well, I guess decent start. We're, well, we're, we're on pace, I suppose. <laughs> Garrett Temple's in the game, by the way. It's, it's, it's Simmons, Gay, Dick, Nohara, and Temple. Do I work tomorrow? Yes. MA scouts also about the Joker, despite being a young guy. His upside appears limited by his lack of explosive foot speed. He, so he was picked. Uh, you, you, yeah, you brought this up like last stream. Jokic is such an extreme example that yeah, like, I'm not saying it can happen with with guys like Edie. I, I would never say like this player will never do this, but I I just don't really see it. That's all. Players, players, look, players. Prove their selection wrong all the time. Could he do it? For sure. Quickly, Barrett and Barnes sitting side by side of the bench. Nice little uh, 
snapshot there, huh? Oh, you know what? It's very good to see RJ back with the team. I, I'm not sure if he was here in the Wizards game. It's very nice to see RJ Barrett back with the group after everything that's gone on in his personal life and, and family life, the traumatic experiences. It's awesome that RJ's back with the team. Eighteen, eighteen, one fifty-eight to go in this thrilling, high-scoring NBA matchup between the Brooklyn Nets and Toronto Raptors. As Noara turns it over in transition, here come the Brooklyn Nets. Lob up top to Darren Sharp. Darren Sharp. Temple to Grady Dick. Zach Eady becomes a lot more interesting as a 31st overall pick for the Raptors if Jonte Porter's not with the team. Jordan Noir in the corner for three. Off the mark. Rebound to the Nets. Gilliard. We're making up names here. To Dayron Sharp. Hook shot no good. Dayron Sharp, Scotty Barnes, by the way. Very good friends. So uh, it'll be fun for them to reunite after the game. But I don't, I don't think that jersey swap will make as many headlines as uh, Grady Dix from last week. Speaking of, Grady Dix finds Kobe Simmons wide open in the corner. Does not go in the three, but Mohamedou Gay tips in the rebound and ties the game up at 20. In mid-range, way off the mark for Lonnie Walker. Raptors looking to take the lead here. Temple to Nuara. Colby Simmons inside, cutting inside. Gay comes up top for the screen, gives Jordan Noir a nice lane, nice runway, but bites off way more than he can chew. He's blocked. Grady Dick on the rebound, also blocked. And now the Nets looking to take the lead here. Shot clock, game clock separated by about five seconds. Twelve seconds to go. And on the game clock, Lonnie Walker fires away a three. No good, but Dayron Sharp tips in the rebound. Raptors just no size in the floor right now to deal with those offensive rebounds. Grady Dick turns it over right before the buzzer. Nets will get one up and won't, will not go there. And here we are, Raptors down by two. After one, a riveting 22-20 game so far. You know, it, it's it's it's... It's been bad, but within the context of this team, it's been okay. <laughs> like, I know who we are. I know what's going on. Within that frame of mind, it's not going that bad. They're doing okay here. Derek, uh, Whitehead, Dick, Jersey swap. We need, uh, what about Mohamedou Gay and Grady Dick? That'd be a nice, nice swap. I, I, I'm pretty sure he got some shit from the Raptors for doing that. But look, it's his, it's his buddy. He's taking a photo with his buddy. They had a little bit of a fun little gag in the process. Look, they didn't choose their names. It's their names. Orlando Magic maybe fired their social media guy or girl because of it. Now, Edie's gotten better. Uh, he's on draft boards now. Last year, he wouldn't have been drafted, which is why he's unde which is why he undeclared. Um, he's absolutely improved defensively, athletically, and as a passer. But you know, we'll see if that translates to the NBA. That's all. Hey, look, he's Canadian. I, 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 look, I want to see anybody succeed. There's nobody I want to see do poorly unless they're like Grayson Allen or... Mark is smart. Like, I want everybody to do well. I like seeing the journey for all these guys. And at seven foot four, yeah, you've, you, you know, you've got a chance of being a sniffing player in the league with that level of skill. So we'll see if he can hang defensively. The, the big center era is creeping back up, but like, the big centers of today are a lot more skilled. That's why big size has always been important to the NBA, but now the centers coming to the league are so much more skilled. So it was like, 
an opposite bell curve of, of centers in the league because, okay, we need more skill in the NBA. But then the centers adapt. Okay, now the centers are skilled. So centers are important again because now they're as skilled as some of the other guys, like, like Jokic. But take a look at Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond is getting like, you know, sporadic minutes off the bench for the Chicago Bulls. Five, six years ago, Andre Drummond would be considered a franchise player worth a max contract. He's just not skilled enough to be in that position. But yeah, I, I love that we're adding on skill to these guys and uh, it's making them much more relevant at the NBA level. And it's an interesting wrinkle for the NBA. It, the league's always changing. The league is always adapting for sure. Schroeder, as uh, the second quarter gets started here. And ooh, exclamation mark as Noah Clowney throws down at the rim. Nets lead by four. I, I'd like to see Edie at the Olympics. I think to deal with a lot of the, the, the size issues that Canada has, if they're playing against a traditional big, it'd be nice to have Edie on the roster. Like, who are the centers for, the, for Canada? Kelly Olynyk, we've seen firsthand, as, as smart of a player as he is, he's no rim protector. And we saw it last year at the FIBA World Cup. Um, other center for, the, for Team Canada, Dwight Powell. Same thing. Not a good rim protector, not a great defender. So adding in some size would be interesting. That being said, does Zach Eady go to the Olympics or does he focus on starting his NBA career off healthy? Not even sure he'd go. Do I think Del Delano Banton is in his spot? If, if Delano Banton wants to play the Olympics, yeah. Like, like I don't think Canada's Olympic roster is going to be full NBA, fully NBA players. So I think any any Canadian NBA player wants to go probably gets to go. Well, Raptors won't take Edie with the six pick. I I, I assure you that <laughs> they gotta get the six pick first of all. Twenty four to twenty, Raptors scoreless early in the second quarter as Claxton hands off to Bridges. Bridges to is that Wilson for three? No good. It's out to Schroeder on the rebound. Schroeder. Back in his old stomping grounds here. Finds Clowney. Lob inside is blocked by Noara. The pass was blocked. And it's deflected out of bounds for a Raptors ball. All right. Nice stuff by Noara to take away the lob there. Bruce Brown checking in for the Raptors. Checking in with a taped thumb. Now, let's see how he fares health-wise here. Arvidas, that'd be a fun player to have in the modern game. So Simmons to the rim does not get the layup to go. Temple cannot put the rebound back. And here come the Brooklyn Nets. Dennis Schroeder in the corner to Wilson. Wilson at the rim. Tough finish through contact and one. Chance to make this a seven-point game. Drummond still has the ability. He needs to adapt. A lot of guys are too easy. That I guess that's partially true. And I guess he's made some adapting to be more relevant this season than past seasons. But, but the point is, they need to be way more skilled today than they did like 10 years ago. So the fact that the bigs are adapting is making them relevant because size pretty much always has been and always will be important to the NBA. Definitely adding size to Team Canada is important. So if Edie wants to go, it'd be worthwhile, I think, to play him because he even got like sporadic minutes like minute here and there at the World Cup is a good opportunity for him to get some development in and, and he's he's transformed his game compared to last year and last year he was best player of the nation in NCAA so the fact that he's even better now yeah interesting Jordan Nawara on a steal finds Bruce Brown at the rim transition layup they made that a lot harder than they needed to but Bruce Brown gets to go Strength is an underrated fact in the NBA. It's one of the things that makes Jokic so great. Jordan, too. Yeah, I guess LeBron. You know, I think like OG, he's so strong for his size. Lets him guard the one through five effectively. As Schroeder for three spills away. Bruce Brown on the rebound, taking it the other way. In the paint, finds Garrett Temple cutting to the rim. And Garrett Temple, the vet, with the layup. And Garrett Temple all of a sudden earning himself some consistent minutes in the NBA. Did not expect that 10 days, ten games ago, but here we are. Garrett Temple making an impact late on in the season. 
Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We've entered the Garrett Temple Zone. Reminder, everybody watching, if you are enjoying the stream content, make sure you do hit the like button. It does go a long way to supporting the content. And if it's your first time here, you want to continue to see more Raptors content. If you do want to get involved in the chat, you do have to be subscribed to the channel. As long as you're subscribed for one minute, you can get involved with the chat. But uh, along with that, you get great Raptors content and streams and videos. And when the channel hits 17,000 subs, we're giving away two Raptors jerseys. So get yourself on board with the Amateur Army. Subscribe today and, hey, maybe you might win a Raptors jersey. How do I feel about Kobe Simmons? I've seen five minutes of him. Uh, I got no comment as of yet. So far, um, a little erratic. Hasn't quite settled in quite yet. A lot of time to go here. 9.07 remaining in the second quarter as the Raptors are... Uh, down by three here to the Brooklyn Nets. What do I uh, did I hear about the Jonte Porter investigation? Yes. Um, definitely got to be the topic of tomorrow's video, the Jonte Porter investigation. It's, uh, again, sad, but no sympathy from my end. How do you feel if you're Jalen McDaniels seeing all these random ass dudes playing? Like Raptors even going five deep with the bench. Kobe Simmons, Garrett Temple, Muhammadu Gay playing. How do you feel if you're Jalen McDaniels, you still can't get on the floor? Like, that can't feel good. That that cannot feel good. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm fine getting paid to sit and do nothing. Listen, I'd do that. He's making four and a half million dollars this season. What am I talking about? No, he wasn't. What? Oh, I'm talking about other Jacob. Too many Jacobs, man. Bruce Brown is terrible. Was he this bad early in the year with the Pacers? Uh, no. Um, he's a, um, he's a ceiling raiser. He's not a floor raiser. Somebody described him like that. It's the best way to describe him. He's a ceiling raiser. He's not a floor raiser as uh, we're learning here, but he's a excellent complimentary piece on a good team. There's a lot of good teams who would want him. Bridges has the pass stolen away. Nearly nice hustle there from Simmons, but the Nets still have it. Finney Smith for three air balls out of the timeout. And here we go the other way. Raptors with Simmons. Now Temple in the corner to Muhammadu Gay. Working here on Claxton. Get rid of it. Now Bruce Brown. He's working on Claxton. To the rim. Cycles back up top. Puts up the right hander over Claxton. That's what I call a bad shot. Doesn't go and that's moving the other way. Yeah, fade away one hander over Nick Claxton. Not the ideal shot for me. For Bruce Brown. Claxton has the pass stolen away by Simmons. Nice hustle play once again by Simmons. Mohamedou Gay to the glass. Completely uncontrolled. Like, he's got to score that. He's, he absolutely has to score that over the smaller defender there, Mohamedou Gay. And uh, he doesn't there. Those are ones you got to have in the NBA, man. Nets move the other way. Nice ball movement. Finney Smith hands off to Claxton who throws it down at the rim. What is the NBA penalty for players gambling? I don't know. I guess we don't really have a sample size. Betting against himself is crazy, though. Noir, a nice spin off bridges and finishes. He like there, there was betting against himself. That's crazy. Like, it's one thing to bet on yourself to do well, but to bet on yourself to not do well and influence a game is crazy. I don't like these Nets jerseys. Personally, I'm not a fan of gray on jerseys, period. Um, but I, I don't like the design on these that much. I, not not everybody. Some people might like it, but not my taste. Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder, deep three. Six-point game. Nice little. Oh. 
Al Williams said Dennis for his signature. I'm like, uh, Deep Three, Dennis for his signature. He said Dennis for his signature celebration. I uh, I watched Dennis Schroeder for many games in Raptors uniform. I do not know what Dennis Schroeder's signature celebration is. Nice, nice bucket there from Kobe Simmons. Maybe growing into the game here. Let's see. Jonte was securing his retirement security. I promise you, I promise you, whatever money he made betting at DraftKings, whatever it was, was not retirement security. What would have been is securing a second NBA contract with the Raptors or getting another contract, uh, a, a contract in the summer in the NBA. I promise. He wasn't making generational wealth with the sports betting. Uh, it'd be difficult to do so. Extremely difficult to even think you could fly under the radar and do that. There's just no way. The amount of people that would have to be involved, the amount of betting groups to get that sort of coin down, there's just no way. Nice play off the inbound. Abaji lays it in there. Raptors 33-32. 5-31 on my clock as the Raptors take the lead on a 7-0 run. Who is this? Somebody on the Nets. I could tell Matty D also didn't know who that was. Because when I, when I used to commentate basketball, I would say in a strong take there, as I'm flipping through notes to see what the guy's number is, strong take there by Trendon Watford. Speaking of Watford, now Matty D knows who he is. I caught that. Thirty-four, thirty-three for the Nets. Four fifty-five to go in the second. Just an all-time classic, high-scoring game here between these teams. Inbound there for the Nets, and fouls called. I believe is against Javon Freeman Liberty there. Freeman Liberty once again starting for the Raptors. Did not start on Saturday, though, did he? Uh, no, I guess he didn't. Weird. But started the game before and starting today. Watford with the right. Misses this time. Rebound to Gary Trent. Gary Trent to Bruce Brown. Brown to the glass. Misses. Not an uh, uncommon sight to see. 34-33. Brooklyn. Watford once again to the rim. This guy's taking everything now. He's fouled and he's going to head to the line here. Don't spam in my chat, by the way. I could probably... Go on my phone and check the score of the game quicker than it would take for me to type who's winning. That's not true. But, like, close. Also, the scoreboard is here. Also, sometimes, like, scoreboard, you know, if some people don't see the arrows, there's an arrow up here beside Brooklyn and down here beside the Raptors. But, like, in a game that's, if it's a one point game, I don't think it really matters that much who's winning, especially in the second quarter. The time displayed. Uh, shout out to Adam Wetstein for sending in this super chat as Gary Trent misses a floater. Status quo resumes. Thank you so much for that. Adam Wetstein says, if the NBA uh, prop bet scandal goes bad, it is all the YouTube creators that will pay the biggest bite. Sponsors will disappear. 
I uh, thank you so much for the super chat, but I uh, unfortunately I, I have to disagree here. Uh, betting scandals have been around for a long time. Um, obviously, the frequency of which they're happening is is uh, more severe than it's ever been, and it's it's obviously down to the amount of sports books that are out, the regulation of sports betting, and the overall promotion of sports sports betting in in things like NBA broadcasts, but. Um, I don't think it'll hinder any creator's ability to get sponsors. Like, I don't think any sports book is looking at this information thinking, oh, we're in trouble here with promo. Um, if anything, they're, they're looking for to make sure Jonte Porter didn't game them. <laughs> but who knows? Oh. One sec. <laughs> Surprise, bubble tea. Where's it from? Maybe I shouldn't tell you. You like those nets? I don't know. I'm not a big fan of them. Oh, man. Always a good day when you get bubble tea and it comes with a plastic straw. Listen, I'm all for, you know, being environmentally... Conscious, conscientious, Here comes whatever the, the word money. Money, money, money. I'm all for it. <laughs> dollar, dollar. Dollar, like you can't, yeah, you can't drink bubble tea out of a paper straw is just like impossible. So, Shredden Forbes, the great reminder to the chat. Please make sure you do hit that like button. I'm spilling a little bit. If you're enjoying the content so far. Hit the like button to support what I do here. And uh, make sure you are subscribed. We're getting close to 17K, and you can help us get there. Subscribe to some great Raptors content. Uh, Kobe Simmons looks decent here. Uh, making some, some heads-up plays on defense. Bubble tea is twice as nice when uh, it just shows up at the door. Yeah. Surprise bubble tea. Early days for Kobe Simmons. Offensively, his touch around and has been left a bit to be desired. But uh, most players using NBA history, wow, or in Raptors history, 29 this season. And that number might keep growing. Uh, I'm intrigued by my initial look at Kobe Simmons, but need to see uh, a lot more to say, yeah, let's give him another 10 day contract here. Two bad teams fighting it out. Brooklyn don't have their own pick, so there's no reason for them not to try and win. Raptors, every reason <laughs> to do that. 39-33, my feed has crashed. Looks like a broadcast issue, not a me issue. But the shot does not go anyways for the Raptors. What do I think of this parlay? Jokic over 26 points, Nuggets money. Depends on the odds. I have no idea. Gotta give me a price. Personally, I have uh, under on Nikola Jokic points today, though. Huh, so, I'll, I'll tell you that. Watford just knocked down a three, and it is a 10-0 run for the Brooklyn Nets. It's a nine-point game. Did I hear what happened to John T. Porter? Absolutely. Crazy. Gary Trent to the rim and one. Trying to trim this lead down with uh, less than three minutes to go in the second quarter. I love when news like this goes down because with with the 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 highest utmost amount of respectfully I've been streaming for an hour and a half okay my entire livelihood has been based on my ability to cover as free liberty well I saw myself as Freeman Liberty throws it down there. 
My goodness. That was nice. Uh, what I was trying to say, I've been streaming for an hour and a half. This news came out over two hours ago. My entire livelihood has been dictated by my ability to cover the Toronto Raptors successfully. Whether that's my second income in this channel or my primary income where I was given a job based on the strength I showed in my YouTube channel. Yet, there is this doubt that I've seen major Toronto Raptors related news. <laughs> this is what's always peculiar. That's one of the Raptors, by the way. Schroeder ends it there. Uh, but yes, for anybody wondering, respectfully, I have seen the Jonte Porter news. <laughs> My point is, I'm always looking for news like this. So if it, if it happens, I'm usually within a minute I've seen it. Phoenix kind of says it the best there. And he says it better than I do. Like especially like especially cuz I'm like on I'm all, coming on to do content. I wouldn't be like in the in the dark. That's what I'm. Yeah. But Phoenix has written it out exactly. 46 to 40 here. Uh, Richard, interesting point there, says, you can tell Trent loves playing on a team where he can take whatever shot he wants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy's a shooter. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes maybe not. But he, again, because Grady Dick, corner three doesn't go there. Again, I, I feel like watching Gary Trent this season, I haven't been upset with sh shot selection very often. That's never really been an issue. Watford, up with the right, and gets the end one there. What's my favorite ice cream flavor? Rowlett asks. Uh, anything like chocolate fudge. The more chocolate, the better. Triple chocolate fudge, chocolate fudge, whatever. Something with chocolate, something with fudge. It's with chocolate sauce. Nice and easy. <laughs> Anytime I try to deviate away from chocolate, I'm like, man, I wish I had chocolate. <laughs> John Freeman Liberty, nice cut to the rim. Nice move there. Tacking from like 35 feet out. Finds a gap, gets right to the rim, and the uncontested layup there. Good explosiveness shown as the Raptors trim into the lead again. 49-42. Uh, lead has been as large as nine. So I guess they haven't trimmed much, especially if the Nets can score here. Shot clock, game clock, separated by 10. Six in the shot clock as Bridges fires a straightaway three. No good. Rebound to Raptors. They got 12 seconds here. Plenty of time. Gary Trent slowing it down. Eight seconds. Running out of time now. Trent, one-on-one -on -one with Bridges. Going to get the shot up at the buzzer for three. Oh, Gary Trent. <laughs> Step back three at the buzzer. And the Raptors will be down by four, heading into the halftime period here. All right. That's certainly a welcome sight to see when you have Gary Trent Jr. over 20 and a half points in the game. Gary now up to 13 on the night. What's Scotty wearing on his feet? Did they show his shoes? Let me see. Oh, man. Looks like he's got some loafers on. That's kind of a look, um, not one for me, but I don't know. Some people, I guess, can pull it off. Uh, let me see if there's a better angle of the Scotty Barnes footwear choice of the day. You know what? Now's a good time to use that Scott, that uh, Gary Trent emote. Don't use it much, so let's fire away. Let me see Gary Trent emote. Looks like he's just wearing some loafers there. Yeah, not for me. Uh, I'm more of a sneaker guy. 
I got some some foot issues at the moment right now. Dress shoes are not a go for me at the moment. Uh, there's been so many times I watched Gary Chen Jr. There'll be three on one. He'll take the difficult layup rather than the easy pass. Not a passer, bro. <laughs> Definitely not a passer there. What do I think about Harden trying to block Kawhi? I had to watch that video like three times to like truly process what was happening. <laughs> what? And I loved that right after Kawhi was like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't know. Like Harden is, is one of those players to me that like almost shoots better when they sense like a guy closing them out and they like kind of hit in rhythm. But yeah, that was really dumb. That was really dumb. Is it Mira's Kelly never passed to Grady Dick? I think it's you. I certainly do not get any sort of sense that he's willfully ignoring Grady Dick. <laughs> That's funny. Looks like shoes when your kid, your mom asks you to come get groceries, you throw on whatever shoes are there. <laughs> That's what it looks like with the big white, the tall white socks. What Boba player? I got uh, Taro Slush with 70% honey and brown sugar pearls. First time I got bubble tea, I got a Taro Slush with brown sugar pearls. And that's it. That's been my order ever since. I don't get anything else. I'm not a big tea guy, so I don't like, like the... I don't know how to, I'm not a tea guy, so I don't know how to describe it. Like the stuff that tastes like tea. Like, this is good. It's like a it's like a it's like a milkshake almost. All right. That'll do it for the first half. I'll go through the box score in just a moment here, but as much as I'm enjoying my bubble tea, I do need some water. And I do need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back, guys. While I'm gone, it's a great opportunity for you, if you are enjoying the stream, to smash that like button and help us on the road to 17,000 subs by subscribing to the channel. Not only are you going to get Raptors streams for nine of the 11 remaining games on the season from myself, you're going to get streams in the offseason and, most importantly, videos for the rest of the season and beyond. Tons of great content coming up in the offseason. I want you guys to be on board Join the Amateur Hour Army today. I'll be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere. Enjoy some music for two minutes, and then we'll get into some halftime talk. Didn't fill up my water. I forgot. I'll do it at the end of the next quarter. All right. What's going on? Winner one. How was dinner? Was it was good. It was what I had on Friday, just <laughs> on top of fries instead, instead of a, a wrap. Uh, just ground beef, 
seasoned up like I would season up a burger. Basically, it was a ch I uh, chopped up some potatoes and threw them in the air fryer. Nice, easy. I recommend. All right. Steve Stevens says rum and raisin is the best ice cream flavor. That that's gotta be that's gotta be a troll. What the fuck is rum and raisin ice cream? I see, yes. Yes. <laughs> I did see the Jonathan Poirier stuff. It's crazy. This rum and raisin ice cream. What on earth is this? I can't say I'll ever order this. I will never, I'll never order this. What the? That's a hot take right there. That is a hot take right there. I did see the Jante Porter stuff. Yes. All right. Let's get into the box score from the first half here. Dennis Schroeder leading the way for the uh, Brooklyn Nets starters with nine points, but Trenton Watford on the bench with 11. He leads the way scoring wise for the Nets. However, leading the scoring in the game is Gary Trent Jr., He's got 13 points, 5 of 9 shooting, 2 of 4 from 3. So solid start to the game here. Gary Trent, 13 points, 1 rebound. That's it. No assist, no steal, no block, no turnover. My guy is straight fucking shooting tonight. <laughs> That's what he does, baby. Kyle Linux, uh, not so much from a scoring perspective, but 6 assists. Diving out of the high post once again. Freeman Liberty with probably the most impressive half he's had with the Raptors. Like, he just seems a lot more settled in. He's got two assists, two rebounds, a steal, and he's got six points to go with it. Grady Dick, one of his off nights here. He's one of six from the field. O of three from three. Oche Baji's three of seven with six points and four rebounds. And off the bench, it's a bit of a struggle lineup here. But Kobe Simmons, he's got a three, and he's got another bucket for five points here on the first game since signing that 10-day contract out of the Raptors 905. Yeah, look, it's a it's an NBA game in 2024 where both teams stay under 50 points in the first half. It's a struggle watch. Uh, Brooklyn shooting 49% from the field, 28% from three. Toronto shooting 41% from the field, 18% from three. Seven of seven, three, sorry, three of 17 from three for the Raptors, five of 18 from three for the Brooklyn Nets. Um, how are we in this game? They have six more rebounds. They have 10 turnovers. Well, there you go. We're getting some steals here. Uh, Brooklyn has turned the ball over 10 times compared to the four by the Raptors. That is the only reason the Raptors are even within striking distance in this game, down by four in a game that, yeah, would be beneficial to lose, we know. Looking around the league, it scores here. Cleveland up by 10 on Charlotte. Boston up by 18 on the Hawks. Man. Uh, New York up by 17 on the Pistons. Washington up by, by 14 on the Bulls. And uh, Houston up by 3 against the uh, Blazers. Spurs up by 10 against the Suns. Man, Phoenix might be in trouble here. Mm -mm -mm. Phoenix, honestly. Opportunity. Uh, they missed the playoffs. It's crazy. It's a very dumb question, but can the Raptors... No dumb questions. Actually, one dumb question, which we've covered already. That's not a dumb question. <laughs> Can the Raptors be penalized as a team for Porter, or is it all on him? It, it's all on him. I don't, I uh, can't confirm to you 100%, uh, but the, yeah, I don't see any reason why the NBA could penalize the Raptors at all for that. Uh, interestingly, Victor Wembanyama is not playing in the Spurs, rep by 10 on the Suns, which, uh, new development. Wemby isn't even playing. <laughs> Scott Foster does these hiding in plain sight. That's funny. How is betting on yourself bad? Betting on yourself isn't that bad. Betting against yourself is very bad. Both you can't do. Both are bad. Betting against yourself, though. Man, is that horrible. Spurs beat the Warriors once the NBA is still. We're not playing. It's crazy. The Suns have to win this game. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys the NBA strength of schedule to remain, remaining this season. Um, guess who's number one? Phoenix. Uh, their strength of schedule remaining 
is 6 607. They play the Spurs tonight. Then they still have to play the Nuggets, the Thunder, the Timberwolves twice, the Clippers twice, the Pelicans twice, and the Cavaliers. Like, Phoenix are in fucking trouble, man. And they're only a half game up on the play and turn positions. Phoenix are in trouble, dude. Couldn't afford Toronto rent. Let's. I know we're make, like we're having fun here, but like he's he's actually he actually makes half a million dollars a year. He's good. Um, I got Taro's flush here. <laughs> the uh, the girlfriend surprised me. Surprised anything is. Always good when it's food or drink. <laughs> I cannot show you the Raptors game, unfortunately. Would love if I could do that. That's the dream. One day. A uh, content company wants me to do a watch along for the Raptors. It, it happens, you know. Um, Steve Dangle does, like, Leafs watch alongs with the actual game on for Sportsnet. Um, Sports Interaction... Just hired Gate 14 Pod for Blue Jays watch songs. Although I don't know if they're actually going to show uh, the games. But if they do, that'd be cool. Oh, the Tankathon graphic. Uh, yeah, here's the strength of schedule remaining in the NBA. Oh, no, this is the mock draft. Sorry. Here is the remaining strength of schedule. Uh, Phoenix, number one. Raptors are number 12. So, pretty difficult schedule remaining. Uh, I, I, I've said this a few times already on the channel, but I do not believe the Raptors will be favored in any game for the rest of the season. If they are six and a half point underdogs at home to Brooklyn, they will not be favored away. They have a chance of being very marginally, slightly favored over the Wizards at home when that game goes on next season, but or uh, later this season, but yeah, I I, I think is a real shot the Raptors lose out here. If the Rockets make the play over the Warriors, that is insane, man, and and it could happen, really, it could. I would also love the thirty first pick. Because then you have, yeah, all day, all night to prepare for your first pick on the second day. I think that's a great position to be in as well with that Detroit pick. Um, I think it adds to its value, honestly, having the full day to prepare for it. Does it rob to trade Jalen Green a first-round pick for Mikael Bridges? Hmm. I didn't see that. So there's one that I didn't see. Uh, so the Rockets offered the Rockets offered Jalen Green a first round pick from Mikhail Bridges. Is that what happened? What was the first round pick? Do we know? Like, was it their own? Well, they don't have their own this year, but huh. It's tough because Jalen Green is such a polarizing talent. Like, if you saw Jalen Green the last 10 games, you'd say, hell yeah, I'm doing that trade. Oh, the Rockets own the Nets' pick. But the Rockets don't have their own. I think Utah have it. Second half has started. I'm deciding which side that trade is better. I probably lean keep Mikhail Bridges, but that sounds like kind of even. It'll just depend on if Jalen Green can keep this form up. Do I see Pirtle on this team in two years? That's a really good question. Two full seasons. So... Three years, I'd say no. Two years, oh, if I had to bet on one side, I'd say no. But, like, I don't know. Okay, I've got a bit left in there, but I'll spare the microphone with that sound. 
<clears throat> I would probably say no, but I could but I could see it. What do you guys think? Would you trade Jalen Green in a first round pick for Mikel Bridges? Like which side who who would win? Who would win the trade? Rockets receive Mikael Bridges. Nets receive uh, Jalen Green and a, let's call it, late lottery first round pick. Bad trade for both. I think it, I think Houston would be better with that trade. It'd be interesting for, it'd be interesting for the Nets moving forward in a rebuild there, but yeah, I probably still think Houston win that trade. Honestly, you know, that's a great point. Jacob247 says it's a bit underappreciated in discussing Mikhail Bridges' value. It's an interesting angle to say, like, uh, Mikhail Bridges may not be the best player, but would you? But you're going to get 82 games of Mikhail Bridges, whereas another guy you might get 60, 50, maybe even 70. Mikhail Bridges is going to be there every game. That That's a big draw of having a player like that. That's an interesting point you bring up. That does add to his value. 51-45 here. We're getting locked in now for the second half as Dennis Schroeder connects in mid-range. Did he... Uh, did, did Dennis Schroeder just turn to the Raptors bench and talk some shit? Did uh, let me okay? We got a timeout here. Let me let me uh, rewind here and rewatch that. No, no, Dennis. I was about to say Dennis Schroeder was actually uh, at at one point the most efficient mid range player in the NBA when he was on the Raptors. So he hit the the mid range. No, no, no. It doesn't look like okay. It doesn't look like he said it. No, it did it didn't look like he said anything. If he did, that'd be kind of crazy. <laughs> Cause like it, what? It's not like we disrespected him here. He played loads of minutes, and now he's starting. Although he would have been starting if he was here at this point. But yeah, I don't know how how much better is Brooklyn of a situation in Toronto. Like, who would you rather build around going forward, Scotty Barnes or Mikael Bridges? All bias aside, I um, I'm still taking Scotty there. Okay, I just wanted all the the brown sugar pearls up. No, I'm good. <laughs> I don't like Cam Thomas and Jalen Green together. That, that's kind of true, but you can move Cam Thomas. Hey, yeah, Barnes is only 22. That helps. Anyways. Dennis didn't seem great. The vibes on a for the vibes and development team. I I just think he got over. I, I don't know. I think a lot of it was coaching. I like. I think Dennis Schroeder is a is a good vet. Judging by his interviews he did every week on the Raptors show, he seemed like a seemed like a pretty good vet. Good player. I I think overhated by Raptors faithful. Overhated. Solid player. But. He got overused. Like, just, he was treated by the coaching staff like a player that he is not. I don't know. It, it just so so baffling on a night-to-night -night basis. He wanted to go to a playoff team, got sent to the Nets. Uh, Dennis Schroeder still got value in the NBA to me. Yeah, he pretty much said he just didn't want to be on a developing team. Well, guess where you are now, pal? A developing team. <laughs> what do you think about the Kobe Simmons deal? Like, it's a 10-day contract. It's interesting that they didn't want to keep Ramsey for the rest of the season. But uh, so far in the brief thing, brief moments of scene, he's been decent. Gary Trent, step back three off the mark as the Brooklyn Nets lead by eight here. 53 to 45. 
Mikhail Bridges. And call for the travel on the side. We're to get the ball back here. I like quickly Grady, RJ, Scotty, Jakob Lineup. Now guys, good coach. I don't mind that five. Um, it's 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 not tremendous, but with a decent supporting cast, it probably gets a play in tournament position out of it next season. Gary Trent, nice move under the rim. You never see that. A nice little post move there almost by Gary Trent Jr. to get some separation. Gary Trent step back through the timeout. Yeah. High quality there. Soul Train in chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Saying, uh, I think Barnes needs a good mentor to be great. I, I would definitely help to have a vet player like that, but I think Garrett Temple could even provide that sort of uh, vet figure for the team. Kelly Linick as well. You know, would it help to have like a really good player? Sure, but it's just it's not really going to happen. So I, I feel like we, we can still have those sorts of players, even on a rebuilding team. Fifty five forty seven is Claxton finishes at the rim. Abaji to Olinick. Back to Abaji for three. Nice play design there. Frees up Abaji, and he's been inconsistent with his three ball for the Raptors, but knocks one down there. Can I hit you with a clock count? Yes, I can. 8.43 as time goes there. I realize I haven't, nobody reminded me. I haven't even taken the door shot today. It's the third quarter here. Haven't taken the door shot. Um... Made the last one. So next commercial, I'm going to take that door shot here. I don't think Bridges missed uh, a game last year. Jalen Wilson outside to Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder fires up a three. No good. Now I'm used to contested Dennis Schroeder threes not going in. That's for sure. Raptors in transition. Freeman Liberty gets the ball at the rim and finishes. 8.20 on my clock. I'll start counting down here as Bridges brings forward. 8.15, 14, 13, 12 as Bridges throws up a tough shot with the right. Way off the mark. Raptors easily recover on the rebound. 8.04, 3, 2, 1. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Gary Trent finds Olenek down low. Back and down Jalen Wilson. Spins off. No, doesn't spin off. He gives the Freeman Liberty cutting to the rim with a brilliant finish. What a pass. What a finish. Raptors right back in the game. Thank you so much to Soul Train again for that super chat. As the Brooklyn Nets have to call a timeout here. Uh, Pre-game, I said I bet Gary Trent over 20 and a half points. Currently, I believe he's at 15. Yes, 15. So hopefully that keeps going. All right, door shot time. Yeah, my lips are really dry. Hang on. Let's do this. On the fly here. 20 of 32 on door shots since I started tracking on January 7th. Okay, I think I can just take out the January 7th thing. Like, okay, we get it. Right? All right. That's probably better. So move this down. Oh, still moving. All right, we'll do that after. Let's get the door shot in. Here we go. 20 of, 32, 20 of 33, rather. Let's see if we can get this going a little bit further. My, my, I'm going to try not to bank. I'm going to specifically try to not bank it. If I do bank it by accident, it is what it is. But I am specifically going to try to not bank this one. I never specifically try to do it, but I don't not try. I don't try, but let's see. <clears throat> I, I try I tried I tried way too hard to just not bank it. And uh oops. Oh, Max and Ruby. 
Uh, oof. It it didn't work. I uh, I that was bad. I don't even want to replay that. That was way off. <sighs> yeah, Bruce Brown for <laughs> three. <laughs> we moved to twenty of thirty four here. I don't know what I was what I was doing. It just it came off funky and man, close the window. <laughs> that was one of the worst I've had. That was one of the worst I had. I apologize. No, it was a commercial. It just happened to be timed right when Max was on screen there. But um, thankfully, the Raptors are not doing as poorly as I just did with that door shot. And uh, they're right back in the game here. Most assists by a center Raptors history. K. Linick got 10 assists today. That is tied for the most with Oliver fucking Miller of all people. Wow, Marcus Saul never had a 10 assist game for, for Toronto. That's surprising. What's my childhood TV show? Uh, SpongeBob. But like it's still my, my show and I'm not a child anymore. SpongeBob is the GOAT. Uh, I am a Raptors fan. Yes. Oh, okay. Hang on. A report from Woj here in regards to the Jonte Portis situation. Uh, another report comes out suggesting that at least one other U.S. sportsbook detected unusual betting interest on Porter props in the games in question. A sportsbook industry source told ESPN multiple betting accounts attempted to bet large amounts upwards of 10 and 20K. Well, there you go. So I was saying 10K. Surprised it got it to 20K. Honestly, I'm, I'm absolutely floored here. So 10 to 20K. Um, I, I'd be curious to know if this was on parlays. Because if it was parlays, yeah, they made crazy money. They made six figures, no problem. If they're betting just straight, which I don't think you're going to get this much on a parlay down. But interesting. And this is only U.S. sports books. If we're getting like offshore books... Like, if they actually got, like, real betting syndicates involved on this, then, yeah, they could have made some serious coin. Not really enough for, I think, an NBA player to justify it, but a lot of people might have made a lot of money with these bets. If, uh, if, if they were actually going about it the right way, I'm not really sure how they thought they could do that and not get caught. You know what? Doing it once is one thing. I'm not really sure how they thought they could do this twice and not get caught. Doing it once is just kind of like, okay, maybe they had some inside information from a source from the team that he was... He was uh, did with an eye thing, so they just assumed he was going to go under his props against the Clippers. Doing it once is one thing. For this to happen twice, that's really stupid. Um, like, there's just the amount of data that these sportsmen have access to, the amount of people working to access and analyze the, these sorts of information, there's just no way they could have thought they could do it twice and get away with it. That's that's crazy, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But hey, if they did this and they got multiple people involved on multiple accounts, on multiple sports books, there is uh, big time wealth opportunities that were in play. Absolutely. Uh, they're getting 10, 20K down on parlays. They're in six-figure territory. Uh, if not, and there's a lot of people involved, I don't know how much money they're making each. But again, I don't imagine they were getting down enough to justify uh, an NBA player, an NBA player justifying getting involved with something like this. Get ready to learn Chinese, yeah. Uh, oof, if he's, uh, if he's guilty, yeah, I don't know how, uh, I don't know what, somebody asked earlier, I don't know what the 
level of punishment would be. Obviously, he'd be suspended probably for at least a year, but how far would that go? Would he be out of the league? Like, he almost is out of the league already. He's trying to make a name for himself. Wow, what a chase down block there by Abaji. Wow. Like, this is his first sustained opportunity NBA. That is, that's crazy, man. That's true. It is a crime as well. <laughs> I didn't even take that in. It is a crime. <laughs> as Schroeder, shot clock buzzer, three, way off the mark. Yeah, it didn't cross my mind that this was a crime. It's not just the NBA, an NBA violation. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if anybody else got caught up in it, but. Having this happen twice to John Day is bad. Shanghai Sharks licking their chops right now. <laughs> Gary Trent fades away at the elbow and connects 17 points for Gary. Yeah, I get it. Some people need money. Like when an NCAA player does this sort of thing. Sure. He's making uh, over 400 k this year. And was probably going to earn himself an NBA contract for next season, I think. Abaji at the rim. Man, he's missed three right at the rim today. The, that, that one he tried to dunk and he still missed. Abaji. Finney Smith to Jalen Wilson. Fouled on the layup. Yeah, especially with Bro making that much money as well, it's crazy. Yeah, you have to wonder if, uh, you know, this is, you know, the one cockroach on the, ro the wall means 100 behind it sort of situation. How many NBA players have involved themselves in something like this? Personally, I don't think it'd be that many, if at all, other than Porter in, in their own, like, betting endeavors. You, you, may, you can make way more money playing the NBA, I promise you. But it does make you think, is this happening elsewhere? But it's, uh, like I said earlier, it's very difficult to deceive a sports book like that. Bruce Brown down low, puts it up, puts it in. Here come the Nets the other way again. Dayron Sharp finds Jalen Wilson. Wilson in the paint, throws it up, and th puts it in. Looks like he was throwing a lob, but it just went in there. Yeah, I don't think Porter's coming back next next season. <laughs> hey, everyone. Olenek to Gary Trent for three. No good here. 3.26 to go in the third. Raptors down by four. 64 to 60 was 3.20 to go in a 2024 NBA third quarter. This is this is a rough watch. Dayron Sharp here spins off Olenek. That was a travel. That was a travel. Darko uh, also agrees with me. That was a travel. <laughs> Should have been. No call. Dayron Sharp put it in for two. Six-point game. Olenek to fake. Sorry. There was a foul there. Now we know what Porter spent that 10K Bruce Brown gave him his jersey number on. That's funny. <laughs> Tough, man. He's 24. He's got to be smarter than that. Trent, mid sorry, uh, Grady Dick mid-range connects. He's had a rough night, but... 
That should feel good. No, seeing how it seeing how it kind of looks like it, it's starting to look like it wasn't just Jonte Porter kind of doing some friends and family a solid with this. It's starting to look like to me that a major betting group was involved. And there was a dedicated plan to to get as much down as possible on this. Um, yeah. A lot of people made a lot of money on this. Not NBA money, but a lot of other people probably made a lot of money on this. Temple to Grady. In the corner, Bruce Brown. Wide open three. And Bruce Brown. Almost nonchalant. As he connects from the corner, and this 7 0 run has the Raptors up by one. 137 to go to third. Garrett Temple with a steal. Here come the Raptors again. Temple to Dick to, si to Simmons. Tries to get fancy with the pass and turns it over. Wow. I got to tell you. Um, sorry. Super Child, I'll acknowledge a second here. I got to tell you, if I'm on a 10 day contract trying to earn my spot in the NBA, I'm probably not going. Behind the back with a pass and killing momentum. Uh, we got a super chat here from Jacob247. Great name, by the way. Thank you so much for sending that in. Uh, and saying, thanks for creating a dope place for us to chill and chat while we watch games. Us Raps fans got to stick together through these tough times. Indeed we do. I'm just so happy to have everyone along for the ride, including you, Jacob247. Thank you so much for the super chat. You heard what he said. It's a great place for Raptors community to get together. If you guys are enjoying the stream content, make sure you hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Not only do we have streams like this, I'll be doing a stream like this for eight of the remaining 10 games after tonight as Kobe Simmons really turns it over again. But I also have videos coming through for the rest of the season and tons of content and streams and videos coming in the summer. Make sure you guys are along for the ride. Help us on the road to 17K. Almost at 17K, guys. What's my favorite Timbit? Chocolate. <laughs> nice and easy. Chocolate everything. Noir, a baseline J is good, and the Raptors are rolling here. 69-66 as the third quarter winds down here. 9-0 run for Toronto. Lonnie Walker to Bridges, looking to respond. Going to get something going. Five in the shot clock. As Lonnie Walker puts it up. No good. Rebound. Nice job by Nawara on the glass. Among some taller players like Dayron Sharp. But in transition, a travel is called. Is that again? Did Bruce Brown just... <laughs> in, open, in the open floor in transition, did Bruce Brown just travel? Oh my god. This guy, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> uh, isn't Gilliard on the Grizzlies? Uh, nope. Uh, there's one on the... I don't know if this is one on the Grizzlies. There's one here on the Nets today. Walker to Bridges. Back to Walker for three. No good. Tip in there by Dorian Finney-Smith. Makes it a... One point game, 69-68. One second to go. Grady Dick from half court. Off the rim and away. And the Raptors will take a lead into the fourth quarter. Albeit a one point lead, but close game here in Toronto. Brooklyn Nets, losers of six straight. Raptors, losers of ten straight. Let's see how this one goes down in the end. But a win definitely would go a long way for the Raptors in their quest to finish in the bottom six in the NBA standings. I don't know how to feel going into the fourth quarter, ladies and gentlemen. I have no idea how to feel right now. Let's go have a look at the box score statistics from this game. Uh, Bridges having a really tough night here. He is 2 of 9 from 3. Has only taken one two-pointer. 
Uh, that is crazy for a player of his ability. Dennis Schroeder leads the way for Brooklyn with 15 points on 5 of 11 shooting. But we go to the Raptors here. Gary Trent, 14 shots in 24 minutes, 17 points overall. Uh, we need four more of you guys did tail the bet I mentioned pregame. Kelly Olynyk, nine assists here. Raptors record for assists by a center in a game is 10, set by Kelly Olynyk last game. Looks like he's on track to breaking that record here if he can get two more in the fourth quarter. Oche Abaji, four of nine here with nine points. Javon Freeman Liberty, one of his better nights or best nights in a Raptors NBA uniform. 10 points here in 22 minutes. Grady Dick struggling, two of 10 with six points. Off the bench, uh, aside from that turnover, Bruce Brown is doing okay with nine points. And just players chipping in here and there off the bench scoring. But uh, neither team has crossed 70, and it's the end of the third quarter. This is a rough game. Uh, Raptors are shooting 45% from the field, 22% from three. Brooklyn shooting 43% from the field, 20% from three. Six of 30 from three and five of 23 from three, respectively. 16 turnovers by the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets have turned the ball over 16 times to seven. And Raps are only up by one. This is the state of this basketball team. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know how to feel. Um, you know, I, I think that Wizards game, I, I was thinking about because I didn't stream the Wizards game, nor did I watch it. It was easier for me to root for them to lose in the fourth quarter, not watching the game. I was like, I saw they lost. I'm like, awesome. Very important loss. Watching the game, it, 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 it's tough for me to watch these players who I'm so invested in. It's tough for me to watch and say, man, I hope these guys lose. I, I can't do it, you know? Nathaniel Jordan saying, I'm just looking forward to Jay's baseball in two days. I'm looking forward to that as well. I'm looking forward to getting out to the ballpark. I, went to, I usually go to a ton of Jay's games. Last year, I went to a few, but then I tore my ACL and I uh, wasn't able to go to many games throughout the summer. So I'm hoping to uh, yeah, get back out there for quite a few this year. Going on uh, April 12th. That's my first of the year as of now. Maybe I'll go earlier, but excited for that one. A boss, sorry, that's Kobe Simmons getting to the rim. And the 10-day contract, 905 player, has a uh, nice move to the rim there to give the Raptors a three-point cushion. Trenton Wofford has looked solid tonight. Can he add on to his 11 points? Yes, he can, through the contact from Jordan Nawara and finishing back to a one-point game. Grady Dick, baseline J, nice catch, nice shoot. Raptors back up by three. High flying start to the fourth quarter. We got a game of basketball here. What's going on, Adam? Thank you for joining. Wofford to Claxton down low. Claxton to Finney Smith swings to Bridges for three. We got Bridges, two of 11. Sorry, two of 10 from three in this one. Kobe looks pretty good. I'm uh, intrigued on seeing him for the rest of the week. We might accidentally win here, folks. We might accidentally win here. Reminder, if you're enjoying the stream, watching along with the amateur army, please make sure you hit that like button. We're one like away from 50 likes right now. Help us get to that milestone. And hey, speaking of milestones, channel is inching closer towards the 17,000 sub milestone. If you like Raptors content, you'll get it on this channel in streams and videos. And when we hit 17K, we're giving away two Raptors jerseys. Get on board with the amateur army today. Subscribe to the channel. Inbound to Watford in the corner. Defensive breakdown leaves him wide open, but doesn't make us pay. I'll have a second opportunity here. Nope, up fake. And sends it right into the hands of Kobe Simmons. Very poor pass. Simmons to the rim, blocked by Finney Smith. Watford again to the rim, and he's fouled. About to head to the line.
Really nice defensive play by Finney Smith, man. Nothing wrong with what Kobe Simmons did there. He looks um, like you settled in somewhat decently here, Simmons. Doesn't look out of place on the NBA floor at the moment. Overall, um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see more of this going forward for Kobe Simmons. Looks decent. Yeah, I know he's played 38 games before, but none this season, if I'm not mistaken. Three ball up for the Raptors, no good, and it's a two-point game. 9.58 to go in the fourth quarter. Somebody's got to win. <laughs> Is there a three in the D called? Three in the key, sorry. Or just a, a foul. It's a common foul down low. Mohamedou Gate checking in for the Raptors. Looks like uh, Grady Dick checking out here. Yeah, Grady Dick checking out for the Raptors. Once again, very nice to see RJ Barrett back with the team today. Hopefully uh, recovering after the, the family trauma, family experience. But nice to see him back with the team for sure as Watford hits the corner three right in front of the Raptors bench and has some words for them as well, it looks like. A lot of shit talking for a game that means absolutely nothing to either of these teams. A lot of uh, a lot of shit talking on both sides. Bruce Brown fighting his way to the rim, drawing the foul. I don't know. Not trying to win with Gay or Temple. It's not like they have much other choice here. Like, I'd rather watch them than Jill and McDaniel's. And Starko agrees. Man, uh, there's a floor here with Colby Simmons, Mohamedou Gay, Jordan Nawara, Garrett Temple, and Jalen McDaniel still can't fucking get in rotation. That's got to feel a little embarrassing, right? Like if I'm yeah, if I'm if I'm McDaniel, I gotta feel a little bit embarrassed by that. Anyways, 74-74 after the trip to the line there for Bruce Brown. Here come the Brooklyn Nets. On the floor for the Raptors, Kobe Simmons, Garrett Temple, Muhammadu Gay, Jordan Awara, and Bruce Brown. Bridges to Finney Smith in the corner to somebody. Kicked up top to Bridges, and the three ball is good. Bridges improves to 3 of 11. On three balls tonight. And the Nets lead by three. We're heading to commercial here. All right. Who is that little guy on the Brooklyn Nets? That is... Uh, who is that guy? No, it's not him. Oh, it's Jake Gilliard, right. Five foot eight. Oof. I feel like the Raptors fans that are there want the team to win. It, it's not really easy for like casual, like a slightly less than casual fan to understand what uh, like tanking really does for a team or the point of it. I'm not sure. Shit talking him off is crazy. It is crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> All right. Time ticking down on this riveting contest. 8.58 to go. 77-74 here. Would you pay 10 bucks to watch the Raptors play live? If I wasn't streaming, sure. 
but I'd rather stream than go to a game. I mean, even when the Raptors were like serious to start the year, I mean, they weren't serious on court, but they tried to be. So I, I typically would just rather stream. For 10 bucks, yeah, just for new, just to hang out at the arena, see a live, I'd go to a game, but I'd rather just stream, you know, and just be at home. <laughs> I am in Toronto. I, I could easily, I could get to the game. Let's Google Maps. How long did it take me to walk there? Scotiabank Arena. Let's see. Would it be quicker to walk or streetcar? It would take me, okay. 30 minutes to walk there. I always say 20. 30 minutes to walk there. Take me uh, over 20 minutes by uh, public transit, but yeah, easy. You're the most boring city in Canada. Where's the most boring city in Canada? It's probably more boring than wherever you are. Manitoulin Island. I Man, there's probably stuff to do there still. Noara, fade away two out of the timeout. Rebound to Watford. Ottawa, okay, well. There's more boring cities than Ottawa. Ottawa, Ottawa can kind of suck, but stuff that's more boring than Ottawa. Claxton, up top to Schroeder. Schroeder attacking the rim, no good. Rebound, Gay. Flip to Noir, and Noir does a great job to evade Brooklyn pressure there. Trying to settle things down now. A14 to go as Freeman Liberty gets to the rim, misses the layup, but he's going to head to the line, try and chip into this three-point game. It was voted the most boring city. Oh. Well, I guess you've got some data to back it up here. Now, people who live in Ottawa don't like Ottawa, from what I know. Cohen McCarthy in chat saying they're at the Raptors game. Hope you're enjoying it. I can't imagine it's great, but uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Funny enough, we don't target a center this year's draft is because of Claxton. Probably not. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't think those would be correlated. They're just going to draft uh, as they... See fit talent wise. I don't think uh, they're going to avoid any for Claxton's sake. Uh, Claxton doesn't play for us, first of all, uh, and it'd be hard to make him play for us. Your first Raptors game. Hope you're enjoying it. Have I ever been to one? I've been to I think four, maybe five. As Waff is that Waff? No, that's Clowny. I think that's Clowny. I think that was Clowney in the corner there. 80 to 75, regardless of who it was, for the Brooklyn Nets now. Noir to the rim with the right, no good. Rebound to Schroeder, and here come the Brooklyn Nets again. Bridges. Working on Noir. Puts it up with the right, gets it to go. Brooklyn. In the ascendancy here, up by seven with seven to go. Who do they play in your favorite one? Um, Orlando. They've had some stinkers with me present, to be honest. Freeman Liberty looking to try and change things. Five on the shot clock. Working on Jalen Wilson. Tough midi is good and a big shot for the Raptors. Freeman Liberty. Has got 13 here. Hoping one day I can go to Raps game every time I'm in Toronto in the summertime. You got to go experience it. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really fun experience to have if you're a Raptors fan. Raptors get a steal here. Bruce Brown in transition. Uh, pass cut off. Granted, he went for the home run sort of pass there. 
And it was, it was cut, off, cut off eventually, but went for the high-risk, high-reward play there. If uh, you do want to go see a Raps game, yeah, like right before the game, grab some tickets. I did that for TFC on the weekend. It worked out well. I've done it for the Leafs before. Uh, granted, Leafs are still not going to get cheap, but maybe a bit cheaper. Yeah, Raptors, they ain't selling out right now. Try and get it tickets like less than an hour before the game, and I think you'll be good. Baji down low is has his pass block, blocked away. It's out of bounds, though, for a Raptors ball, five-point game. I don't know. I feel like the Raptors aren't really targeting Claxton at all. I don't really see where all this noise is coming from for Claxton, to be honest. TFC game is a lot of fun. If you're going to go, I recommend staying in the supporter section. If you're cool with standing for the game, it's a lot more fun. The atmosphere is a lot better. It was fucking cold the other day, though. Jordan Nawara, three, off the inbound, no good. Tipped out for a Raptors ball once again. I've been to a Leafs game. I've been to three this year and three in my life before this year. So I've been to six before. All three games I've seen this year, they won in overtime. Two of the three, they won one nothing in overtime. Crazy. Olinick up top, working on, is this Finney Smith? Spins off, goes to the rim, but he travels. Brooklyn ball. I spent 1K on tickets a game, one of the finals, and don't regret it at all. Best money spent. That's so cool, man. Oh, because they, I mean, they're the first ever NBA Finals game in Canada. Siakam goes off, and they beat Golden State. Man, I, that sort of atmosphere as well. That'd be so cool to be at. I was at uh, game two of the Leafs playoffs in the first round a couple years ago. They lost to, the, to Tampa in game two. Ended up losing the series in seven. Uh, yeah, a couple seasons ago. That was quite the experience. But, man, to do it at a Raptors game would be unbelievable. I, I went with work, so I, I don't know how much the tickets were. But what an experience. Uh, I had I definitely drank too much before that Leafs game, but I don't necessarily regret that. <laughs> the corner, Jalen Wilson for three. No good. Rebound, Toronto. And we're kind of deadlocked here at a five-point game. Starters on the... No, mostly starters on the floor for the Raptors, actually. Is Gary Trent three off the mark. Rebound Schroeder. Has to save it. Does. Bridges with it now. Uh, Raptors have Freeman Liberty. Oche Baji, Kellenic, Bruce Brown, and and uh, Gary Trent. Bruce Brown uh, came off the bench in this game. Grady Dick started. But looks like after Grady's poor night, Bruce Brown will close this one. That remains to be seen. As Brooklyn add on to their lead here. It's a seven-point game, 84 to 77. Olinick to Gary Trent. Nice move to find some space at the rim. Misses the layup, but Kelly Olinick tips it in. Should have made that, but Kelly cleans it up. Not a big deal unless you have Gary Trent over on points. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Grady Dick is about to check back in and uh, likely will be for Bruce Brown. Clowney looking to make something happen here. Clowney to the rim, nearly gets the end one, but regardless, he's heading to the free throw line. Well, Cohen, you went to a game during the tank. You had to kind of expect something like this was going to happen. I think the fact that game is so close is... Uh, is, is, is all you could really want or hope for. The worst is being drunk in those leads. That's actually the best because, like, everybody up there is drinking, so you kind of have fun. <laughs> Do I know why RJ Barrett isn't in the game? Yes. I would Google it if I were you. Bridges to Schroeder, straightaway three. Off the mark, rebound Raptors. No, they should have had the rebound. They don't. Clowney to Finney Smith as Brooklyn looking to capitalize the extra possession. Bridges three off the mark. 
They get another miss on the long rebound. Schroeder, will he provide the dagger for Brooklyn? Wilson, floater, and it wedges right into the backboard and the rim. 4.08 to go, and uh, that might be... Jump ball here. Yes, that is that is why, Cohen. Where does Dennis play? So he played in L.A., which is not kid-friendly. And it's just crazy. I can see why people may not like living in L.A. He's played in Oklahoma. He played in Atlanta. Atlanta's got to be a pretty nice city. But Toronto's a great city to play in. So, yeah, I can see why that's good. I mean, RJ, like it was never, RJ was never going to play tonight. So it's not like you were expecting him to play, and he's not, though. Kyle Linick trying to get to the rim. Nice move, nice take, and it's a three-point game. Three-point game, Raptors. They're keeping it close. This would be a perfect way to lose, though. Keep it close and lose. This would be, this is what we want. Nice move there by Kelly, getting to the rim. Guys, if you are enjoying the stream, make sure you have hit that like button and support the content. Consider subscribing as well for even more Raptors content going forward. Help us get to 17,000 subs, getting close. Get into, that, get into that number. Get into that milestone. Players don't tank, man. Players never tank. Look at Kelly Olenek getting some TV deals already. Look at our boy. Already getting in on the commercials. What if he was on any commercials in Utah? Do you think, uh, you think Utah were hiring Kelly Olenek? I don't think so. It's a great uh, individual business move for Canadians to play in Toronto. Because they're, they're, you're going to be popular no matter what. Like Chris Boucher getting uh, the Slim Jim commercials. You know what I mean? You're Canadian. Sign here. You'll get a commercial. Although Gillette got Trent and Grady, who are not, neither of them are Canadian. I'm sure if they had a Canadian guy they could get, they'd do it. But Grady's super popular. That, that was easy. He got McDonald's as well. Damn. Do all rookies get treated like this? Yeah, Grady immediately got like McDonald's, Gillette. And uh, actually, he was with Guru, the energy drink, right after he got drafted. Do all draft picks get this sort of get this sort of uh, get these sort of opportunities right after the draft? The goofy guys do. Fair enough. You gotta have a personality for it. I'd <laughs> get John T. Porter in a <laughs> commercial. <laughs> I'm taking my own under 0.53 tonight. Guys, this is an absolute lock. I'm going to be out there only for four minutes before I tell my coach I'm too sick to keep playing. And I'm not even going to attempt a three tonight. It's a guaranteed goddamn hit. Smash the under. Let's rally, boys. Oswald's been nasty for years. You just late to the party. Yeah, I saw athletes can't get sportsbook deals anymore, except I see athletes all over sportsbook commercials. So I have no idea. Schroeder in a three-point game. Less than four to go. Schroeder nearly has his pocket picked there by Grady Dick. It's out of bounds, though, for a Brooklyn ball. Unless you're promoting responsible game. Oh, okay. I like that. But the ones I've seen, they're not doing that so I don't know Schroeder hand off to Claxton too easy too easy five point game 
Bruce Brown is his foul calls against the Nets. Olinick fouled there. Oh, if you're in a commercial, you just need to write gambling, responsible gaming stuff in the bottom. Oh, so basically, like, there's no rule. <laughs> okay, that's that's dumb. <laughs> so they can literally still use them. So no rule. Okay. Bruce Brown looking for a spot here in mid-range and just what the fuck was that, man? <laughs> Bruce just loses the handle and just tosses it up. Ugh. I wonder uh like how far like uh, they can push gay. So so you're this is coming from somebody who's like I'm, I'm personally okay with like all the gambling and content. Uh, I'm fine with it. I'm an avid sports better. We have a sports book partner here on the channel, but I've been betting on sports, um, doing well, doing betting on sports for the last two years. Been betting on sports for four years. Did poorly for two years. Doing really well for two years since I figured out how to actually do it and be smart. Um. I'm wondering how far it can go before, I don't know, before like it has to scale back at some point. Because it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. At some point, it's like, at some point, it's got to get too much. Yeah, it's that's what I was comparing it to. It's like cigarettes, like where like, you know, people do it, they know it's bad for them. But then there's a lot of rules against it, which I kind of agree with. I don't know if that's hypocritical. The limitations for um, cigarette companies. I agree with them. But I don't know. When, will, it, will it ever get to a point like that for for sports betting? That's, that was kind of a, a random thought I had today. Do I think Lowry is top five in point guards? In the current NBA? No. <laughs> uh, I'm personally like fine with where sports betting's at right now in, in North America. Uh, specifically Ontario. I'm personally fine with it. Uh, there's a lot of companies competing for a share of the market. They have to be aggressive with their promotion. But honestly, having more sports books is only only makes it easier for betting on sports and winning on betting on sports. You have more options to find good prices, more opportunities for line shopping, more opportunities for sign up bonuses, promos, boosts. More sports books, the better uh, for, for the way I bet 100%. I feel like at some point, like the major betting like conglomerates will just absorb all the smaller ones and it'll just be like like a handful of sports books who just absolutely dominate the space. And then maybe it'll be a case where there's less promo. Yeah, a lot of people are dumb. 98% of sports bettors minimum are losers. So yeah, I get how there's a problem. Schroeder mid range, big bucket there. Do I dabble in multiple sports books? I probably have like 20 to 30 accounts right now. Freeman Liberty. So yes. <laughs> more the more accounts the better. 8881 Trent looking to find something. Nearly turns it over. Abaji to Olinic. Rab's gotta get something up. Olinic open for three. Off balance. Off the mark. And it looks like this one's coming down here. To a loss, seven point game, 220 to go. Raptors. <sighs> Looks like the race has been run here. And uh, wow, is it only going to be a 12 point fourth quarter, man? Yeah, just be smart, responsible with your money. Set a unit size, set a bankroll limit. Make sure you know what you're doing or don't bet a lot. Like if you're just randomly betting. 
props right before the game starts, yeah, you're probably not winning, winning long term. So <laughs> don't bet too much money. If you're betting for fun, sure, that's fine. Don't bet too much money. If you really want to dedicate time and effort to becoming a good sports better, yeah, then do that. But if you're not, then yeah, don't bet too much money. Finney Smith to Watford, open floater. The Raptors have completely fallen apart here. Down by 11 now. That is the largest lead of the game for Brooklyn. And yeah, you know, they kept it close all game, but they have fallen apart late. Erratic late. And uh, yeah, they're about to lose this one. 11 point, uh, sorry, 11 game losing streak. Again, huge threat. The Raptors just, lose out and don't win any more games for the rest of the season, honestly. Rap hey, if Raptors are tanking, which they are, they're doing a really good job at it. Uh, Daily Fantasy, I can almost promise you, just don't play DFS. Like I can, I can almost promise you, you're not beating DFS in 2024 daily fantasy sports. Like you're just not. Um, you bet you beat other other markets, but DFS you're just not beating. You're betting DFS. Um, yeah, don't think you're you're winning long term doing that. The chat's rushing by here. My number zero team? I don't know. Dame. Is Freeman Liberty wear does Freeman Liberty wear zero? I think you might. You ain't smarter than I Yay. Uh you, you can be the uh, smarter than live algorithms on sports. Definitely. That's not rocket science. Oh, we call a timeout, we run a play, out of the timeout, we turn it over. There we go. Oh, DFS nah. It's not about the algorithm. It's just about the, the vague. Ninety two eighty one. This one's going to run out here. The Raptors. Yeah, they are going to lose it. And here we are. 13 point game. Ninety four eighty one. This is a, a sad way to finish the game. A 10 0 run for Brooklyn. You know, the Wizards one was good. The Wizards one was perfect. Hey, you know, you, you, you be competitive, you lose by three, you keep the tank going, but you still lose. Hey, you, you play well, maybe you don't play well, but you keep it close, you keep competitive, but you still lose. This one, um, a bit sad how it uh, kind of unfolds like this, and the Raptors looking like going to be a double-digit loss at this point as Trent makes the free throw. Uh, our Gary Trent, if you tailed my bet, over 20 half points. Looked really good early. And, uh, oh, it fell apart. It fell apart. He's at, uh, I think that free throw will make it 18 for him. He had 17 to start the quarter. Only one. So, hey, if we get a random Gary Trent three on the next possession, we're going to cover that one, but I wouldn't, wouldn't count on it. Kyle Linick at the free throw line for the Raptors makes it a 10 point game here. So at least somewhat competitive. And hey, a Dennis Schroeder turnover might make this a bit more interesting. He is a test to have pushed off there. And the Raptors looking to trim into this lead a little bit more. Freeman Liberty has a lane, but stumbles, recovers, misses the layup, gets his miss. And it's an eight-point game. Okay. Okay. Bridges to Finney Smith. Wofford. Next trying to kill time here. Raptors will have another possession. And a three makes it really interesting. Schroeder lobbed up to Claxton. Can't shoot it, but somehow recovers. And then a foul called the other way. Sorry, foul called against Trent. And that'll put the Brooklyn Nets in the bonus. So we might get a... 
a cheeky Gary Trent three. Maybe he knows he's on 18, wants to get to 20, but that doesn't look good. Darko uh, seems like a great guy. I'm sure that players love him. And there's probably enough excuse from like the team's performance being like just a lot, the rotating cast of players. And the start of the season, maybe the roster wasn't super catered to his strengths as a coach. That's definitely like enough to say for the front office, yeah, I'm not going to get rid of him yet. All right. 27 seconds. Abaji to the rim. Dunks it. Brooklyn get over half court quickly. Again, it's going to kill the clock here. Uh, are we going to foul? Are they going to dribble out? If they're smart, they'll just dribble out here. And yeah, we're going to lose here. Dennis Schroeder probably going to take the shot clock violation. And that'll do it. Uh, I'm going to watch if Gary Trent just heaves one at the buzzer. Darko just says. And that will do it. The Raptors fall 96-88. Uh, probably a score line that doesn't... I mean, it kind of does. I was going to say it doesn't really reflect when it does. Like, turnovers kept the Raptors in the game. Yeah, they, they probably should have lost by even more, to be honest. Um, well, Grizzlies about to get spanked by the the Nuggets, so <laughs> it's uh, probably probably good. Probably good for a, for a loss to go down. Uh, not even getting to 90 points, though, is, is, uh, is tough. Well... Let's not waste any more time worrying about this team. Let's get into our post-game show, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Stick around, everybody. 10-minute post-game show segment here covering everything we saw from the game. So, <laughs> the Raptors kept it close at home throughout, but probably deserve to lose by eight points or probably deserve to lose by even more to the Brooklyn Nets. Let's break everything down for you in tonight's post-game show. Raptors came into this game with a 10-game losing streak. The Brooklyn Nets came into this game with a six-game losing streak. And uh, yeah, the way it works, somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to win. And it was the Brooklyn Nets. Toronto at home today against the Brooklyn Nets were six and a half point underdogs really does showcase where the team is at at this point, but we all know exactly where the team is at. It is what it is. Guys like Javon Freeman Liberty starting games, like last game against the Wizards. Jemias Ramsey started. Today, Jemias Ramsey isn't on the team because his second 10-day contract expired. Like, these are the types of players that have to be with the team. The Raptors have used 29 different players this season with Kobe Simmons on a 10-day contract being added in for today. Looked decent, but overall, yeah, not great from the Raptors here. Uh, NBA game in 2024 finishes 96 to 88. Um, Raptors don't even crack 90 today. That is where we are at. But before we go any further and cover how it all unfolded, please make sure if you do enjoy what you see, you hit the like button. And because we do content like this for virtually every Raptors game, please make sure you're subscribed. 10 games left in the season. You're going to get content like this for eight of those 10 games and plenty more on the way in the off season as well. Keep it locked with the amateur our army but yeah not a high quality basketball game honestly you know watching it helps you know doing it live with interaction from the chat consistently but honestly i've i've enjoyed games less than this one i understood what it was going on i understood it was a bad game and lack of quality overall but it wasn't too horrible of a watch that being said it wasn't good either you know the Raptors shoot 43 and a half percent from the field and they shoot 90 percent from three they go five of 27 from three like Olenek goes 0 of three from three Grady Dick goes 0 of five from three Trent goes two of seven from three just an ugly game overall but in the end Brooklyn just had a little bit more firepower Kind of makes sense. They're starting guys like Schroeder, Claxton, Bridges, Finney Smith. We're starting Freeman Liberty, Abaji, right? Like, with all due respect to these guys, 
You know, we were even bringing like Muhammadu Gay, Garrett Temple, Kobe Simmons off the bench. Like it, it, it's just a, a difference in quality of the teams here, and Brooklyn showcased that in the end. Even though there was they the uh, Brooklyn Nets were minus nine in the turnover statistics. In fact, that's been adjusted here. Brooklyn were minus ten in the turnover statistics here. Uh, they still managed to win this game by eight points. Didn't really tell the full story of the game. Brooklyn end up winning the fourth quarter by by nine points. So Raptors were up going into the fourth quarter. The Raptors had kept it close pretty much throughout the game, largely down to Brooklyn turning the ball over a ton and overall not being very good. But yeah, in the end, when it was like a close game with five minutes left, the Raptors and their starters just completely fell apart. They forgot how to score. You know, as things locked up for Brooklyn, they got a little bit more serious. The Raptors couldn't score defensively. They were everywhere. They were throwing doubles unnecessarily, leaving guys open, getting blown by too easily, and, and all things that come to the territory of not being a very good team. But, you know, even it just, it just felt a little bit disappointing seeing it unfold like that so quickly near the end of the game. But losing is a name in the game for the Raptors. The 11th loss in a row confirms that they will stay under the Memphis Grizzlies for another night in the standings. Memphis Big win for them last time out. Tonight, in tough against the Denver Nuggets. I believe they are currently losing by a hefty amount. Uh, we'll just confirm here. Yeah, they're down by 20 in the second quarter. They're down 49-29. So, yeah, going to be a loss there for the Memphis Grizzlies. So, Raptors keeping under the Grizzlies. So, a big loss there for the Raptors. An important loss there in the tank race and in the tank battle. Players don't tank organizations do and uh, the organization I gotta say is doing a very very good job at it but for the Raptors for the rest of the season here once again like I've said they might lose out not many easy games guess what they just had two of their easy games and they lost both the one against the Wizards I, I, I actually didn't watch you may have noticed there was no content for that game so Watching on the and just box score surfing, like just box score surfing, not watching. It's a lot easier to root for the team to lose. That's where maybe my true emotions were evoked. I was kind of hoping, I hope they lose in a close one here, and they did. But watching this one live, you always do have the soft spot for the players you're invested in so much to do well. But checking in on the schedule here, yeah, not you get the Wizards and Nets again, but you were just six and a half point underdogs to the Nets at home. You'll be. Like nine point underdogs away from home. Home with the Wizards, you might be slightly favored, but with 10 games remaining, not seeing really where the win is going to come from for the Raptors, things are tough, especially you know, when numbers like this are being put up for the team. Kaolinic 0 of 3 from 3, but does get 10 points, 9 assists, 4 of 9 shooting, like diming out of the high post. So we're trying to take the pauses where we can. Gary Trent with minorly inefficient, but 18 points. Abaji, 5 of 11 with 11 points. That's one of his better nights as a Raptor. Freeman Liberty looked his best in a Raptors NBA uniform with 15 points to assist. Grady Dick, though, not his best. 8 points, 3 of 11 shooting. Off the bench, Bruce Brown plays pretty well. Kobe Simmons looked decent in his 17 minutes. Excited to see... I mean, excited is a strong word. I'm, 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 I'm looking for... Kobe Simmons is going to play more games, and it's like, you know, it was a bit of an intriguing debut for the Raptors at the NBA level after playing with a 905 this season. Not much to say for the rest, really. Noir, not really that good. Temple, decent at 16 minutes. Yeah. There's not, there's only so many words you can use to describe the game, but where the game was lost, well, I mean, for starters, Raptors go 5 of 27 for 3, but where the game was lost, getting out rebounded by 20 getting out offensive rebounded by eight and just not using the turnovers well enough. Like 16 points off their 20 turnovers could have used more than that. The only reason the Raptors were really in the game for as long as they were is because Brooklyn turned the ball over a ton. That's where we're at right now, guys. So as far as the tank goes, look, job done here. It's tough, but I'm kind of numb to the pain at this point. We know what's going down. We know how everything's unfolding. It's a little tough to stomach as we go, but it is what it is. The Raps are tanking. They're doing well at it. And with 10 games remaining, 
I'm just kind of waiting for the season to end. But in the, along the way, we still have all the content here covering the next 10 games, the final 10 games of the Raptors season. Things are going to be tough. There's going to be some brutal losses in here, but maybe they sneak out a win or two. Will that be too much? Not enough for to claim the six best odds, the first overall pick in the upcoming NBA draft? That remains to be seen, but it very much feels as though with all the injuries and players missing games, tanking was the right decision by the Raptors. I just hope they did it sooner enough. So if you enjoy what you saw from today, make sure you do it the like button and subscribe for more Raptors content like this. 10 games remaining. Eight games will be covered in streams and in post-game shows. Uh, the, anything else, we'll have plenty of videos out in the main channel and plenty of content on all amateur platforms in the offseason. Very excited to bring you that content. Keep it locked with the Amateur Hour Army. All right, guys. Um, long fucking game, man. Oh, no. Oh, no. I started. I thought I started at 6.30. I started at 7. Normal stream, three hours. <sighs> Yeah, you know, there's been tougher games to watch than that. There's there's tougher games to watch than that one. Um, yeah, the post game shows are getting short because there's just there's just no nothing else to say. Every game, yeah, they did okay, but they're bad and they lost. Here's our schedule. We're not going to win any more games. Bye. <laughs> it's uh, there's not much to say, <laughs> but I do my best. I always try to get the content out. Tomorrow's video, I think you guys know what tomorrow's video topic is going to be. It's the only exciting news, <laughs> infamous news to come out of the Raptors, albeit. But the only exciting news to come out of the team as of late. Jonte Porter. Excited to cover that one in tomorrow's video. Hope to see you there. Keep it locked in the channel, guys. Getting close to 50K. 50K. Getting close to 17K. Hit that sub button and drop a like before you go.